So yeah, I'll, I'll call upon uh, Mr. C. A. Parag Rabin, sir. Yeah, we could be proceed. May I get all of you to rise for the order of our speaker, please? Yeshasupteshu Jagrati Yeshasupteshu Jagrati Kamam 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 Adeva Mrita Mujjadeva Mrita Mujjadeva Asmin Lokaha Asmin Lokaha Shetaha Sarveta Duna Sarveta Shana Yavita Shana Yeta Dvaita Yeta Dvaita Yeta Dvaita Yeta Dvaita Yeta Dvaita the honorable chairman of wrb icic ankit kabraji parem the youngest chairman of wrb icic ankit the speakers for the today's session, C. Vipul Bhai Gandhi, C. Amish Bhai Khanda, my colleague uh, and the co-leader, C. Komal Shinde, my another colleague from Ahmedabad, C. Darshin Vajah, elders in the profession and my dear friends. It is my honor and privilege to welcome you all today in this uh, lecture meeting, the, covering the topics, very interesting topic, opportunities for data accountants, and opportunities for industries so far gift city Gandhinagar is concerned as you know gift city is a, a, a very vibrant uh, industry in uh, gujarat it's a dream project of our prime minister sri narendra modi a lot of things are happening there is a hub for ifsc and attracting many investors in india from as well from abroad for the establishing the unit and doing the business in Duke City. And we being the chartered accountant, considered to be a doctor of finance, we should know the utility and the happenings at Duke City Gandhinagar. And that is why the topic is today's topic is opportunities for industry as well as um, chartered accountant and other professional in Duke City. As well as there are a lot of uh, opportunities for chartered accountants in uh, GST. Our other speaker, the Amishwari Khanda, will address us on the upcoming opportunities for chartered accountants so far. Uh, GST latest development are concerned. Uh, before we proceed further, uh, it is the time for WRC chairman to address all of us. So may I request uh, Chairman WRC Amitish Bhai Kabra to come forward and uh, give the uh, welcome address to the participants. Chairman, please. Good morning, everyone. Good morning. Good morning. And uh, welcome you today. Uh, let me tell you, today is a day where we are giving gift, actually. It's a celebration, absolutely. Uh, gifts are given when there is a celebration. So if today we are celebrating, I think today you have a gift one. Second, we'll be unveiling a wonderful publication also. 
uh, and uh, the authors are in front of you. The mentor of all of these authors is in front of you. And believe me, uh, today, if I were to really tell you, it's a spiritual experience because अगर ये महाभारत है, हम जो सारे योद्धा हैं और opportunities के लिए हम जो लड़ रहे हैं और we're trying to grab some opportunities, तो इन सब में हमारे भीष्म पितामह हमारे पराग लावल सर हैं। I think you you are of loss. He's been a, he's been a past council member, past vice chairman of this council, and believe me, from that day, usually what happens is you know when people are no more in WRC, no more in council, so they kind of fade out. They kind of live their own life, whatever they are, wherever they are. But he is an exception to everything and anything that is been told about council members. He is one person who always has been there, standing and always delivering whenever required. Today, just to take this session, he's flown all the way from Ahmedabad. So I think you got off long once again. Thank you, Parag Bhai, for making this happen today for us. Uh, I must also request all of you to please applaud for our girl, a young chartered accountant, C. A. Komal Shinde. The first step that you take always towards a new thing. And therefore, I said today is a celebration in a real sense. It's a celebration for her also. She took that first step. She filled up a form called My Role at WRC, which we have rolled out. It's a project, it's an ambitious project that we've launched. I am a product of once someone introduced this kind of a program. And I just stood up and said, I want to do something like this in WRC. Why, why shouldn't I get a chance? Why only the you know selected people get a chance? So this year, because I am the product and I have reached to in front of you as a chairman, I thought, let me also create this platform and give me this, give this opportunity to anyone and everyone who's interested. She was one of those who filled up the form. And she's here. Of course, she's new, she's young. She'll take time, but I'm sure the first step that she's taken, that is the biggest step in one's life. The crossover, the barrier, the hurdles that is in mind, face all of you today. All of you senior experienced chartered accountants, a young chartered accountant coming in saying good morning to all of you. And so, of course, there would be a little bit of you know, things, but yes, I'm sure she'll cover up, she'll face up, and she'll do an excellent job throughout. Uh, it's a rough start, but yes, that will happen. <laughs> This is what we want to do this year at WRC. Pride is what we are celebrating. We are entering into the 75th year. Uh, as Komal rightly mentioned, you know, we've been always talking about running about opportunities, so many things, but today we'll be discussing about a geography. How many of you have ever explored a geography? I don't know, but this is a geography that we need to explore. Long before when people you have, would have migrated to Mumbai, I think they again invested in a geography. And today we all are here enjoying the fruits of their vision. I think that is what this session also calls. Today, Vipul Bhai and Amish Bhai both would set up that kind of vision for us. See if you could invest. Maybe someone down the line would always relish. Because of you who invested there, I think we are doing something extraordinary there in your city. And I'm really hopeful something like this happens. But today, as I let me tell you, if I'm talking about technology, if I'm talking about innovation, if I'm talking about anything and everything around newness, the startup, the idea, it's, it's all happening not just focus at Metro, but everything around Metro. The tire to tire three. As a part of WIC, as a chairman, I travel, I get to travel a lot to each and every area of, and this year we've, we've chosen purposefully that we need to go to those places. So like, for example, Endavad is a branch. Now it's almost a 10,000 member branch. So that branch is empowered, it's doing something on its own. But what about something nearby? Like for example, say a Bhuj or a Gandhi Dam. And now we have added another branch called as Gandhi Nogar, the 36th branch of our WRC. And I think that is where the entire action is. 24th, 25th November, LOPAC. If you've heard about World Congress, if you have witnessed World Congress, imagine a smaller concept of World Congress happening, LOPAC at Gandhi Nagar again. Every other action that, you know, we're being, you know, we're privileged to have Anikit Bhai Talati, the Honorable President from Ahmedabad, and therefore, he's focusing a lot on these small areas. So we visited areas like Raigad, like Kudal, like, uh, you know, and uh, Sindhudur and all of these places. There, absolutely awareness for charity companies is absolutely almost next to nil. That is where I think, you know, at WRC, we want to focus our energy this time at those places. And believe me, every place we have got something extraordinary. Every place. One of the biggest, most sought after hotel chain of this 
सरकारली एरिया इतना टोटल सरकारली इज अ चार्ट काउंटर and believe me people call up the brahman chandri respected uh, uh, the chap- there is a chapter that we formed chandradur cp study chapter uh, just and there are hardly 13 14 chart counting there but we want to bring them together and it's a spread out area neither do they come in the ratnagiri branch neither do they come in the goa branch every time someone goes there there is a call to the chart counting ki yaar wahan par se ek reservation milta hai that is the demand of it. of course this for seafood and all this but it's a very very so so every time we go there we discover these things and they and they are the ones who really need a platform because his son is an iim graduate and the kind of revolution is bringing in that industry is amazing these matlab you know small little things but it makes a huge difference for all of us if you are really looking and to young chart accountants especially if you are really looking to explore something amazing you know you belong to that breed of 5 6% people who clear chart accountants you know we have all come from that because of course the pressure was maybe komal was being from a 12% 13% result <laughs> but you know we got people from we all of us are 5 6% people you know best brains and we are caught up only in comparisons i think that is a big feedback for all of us the best brains of the country the most difficult part of the results they had clear that they raised that and instead of evolving further and sort going i think we become behind we just by sat back on our desk and doing something like that. and believe me when seniors as i see so many seniors here i call them experienced people and people like me and people are the energy ones when these when the experience and energy combines something like a fusion that i'm talking about happens because when you know charity content who is running a hotel long such a big chain for a long time they also have presence in mumbai they are talking to a young charity also they are investing they're not a young ca but a young guy who's come from nayam they've done magical they've done wonderful uh the entire revolution aap log demand gaye honge you know so what if you convert every kirana dukan next to you into a supermarket kind of thing just imagine the kind of working capital that you free for that promoter the kind of inventory and all of this billing and dashboard that you create and real value that you create for these promoters i don't want to take much time on that idea because that's a full fledged lecture but believe me that is what we are actually meant for that is what a young chartered accountant in tarkali a senior chartered accountant in tarkali with his idea has told me i was like worrying yes are absolutely if he was sitting there in ratnagiri or in a kudal and just doing income tax returns on gst i think you would have hardly given him a maybe maybe a 10 minutes time also like okay fine you are a charity only doing this need to know but we sat there understood his entire concept idea uh, he is also doing one of the biggest uh, trade associations of that area uh, and uh, how many of you i don't know i have uh, really struggled to reach out to a minister but uday saman or anyone narayan rane are just on the speed dial that is the power that these people have so you know small places but yes powerful places so therefore place is what is the core of this day to day and we have gifts city today i am sure something extraordinary will happen just to tell you quickly we are uh, you know we have launched project saprishi uh, you should look at these projects uh, if at all you can use your good offices to help wirc to launch these projects we'll be happy project saprishi is more uh, if you yesterday you read uh, love bharat times so there was a feature where i have, I have given a, a good article on what we are doing to create ethical accountants for the people we are sitting on a vacancy of around 7 and a half lakh accountants vacancies for 7 and a half lakh accountants um, and uh, this is purely into it space it its spaces banks again around 2 lakh accountants are there i don't know how they don't need chartered accountants but they need accountants and if chartered accountants have to work with these people they need assistance so in this 140 crore population we have just 4 lakhs So just imagine the kind of work we have. If we don't have accountants, if we don't have assistants, I think perhaps we'll not be that effective as we can be or we should be. Talking about effectiveness, this setup is just to introduce that your table, your part of clusters. That's a network. You can you know involve yourself, discuss. Actually, you can make notes, talk and discuss, and you know have a good interaction. So this this classroom is more like a workshop. This is set up for that purpose only. Everything that happens is. to actual symbolic manner and this is one of those attempts that we made at the bhc 
you started on Nirat series, UAE and uh, um, Australia, New Zealand and uh, US. We've already covered up. But Nirat series, we are doing a lot of offshore opportunities. So you can be, you can look up our websites on WRC and find out more on these sessions. Yesterday we had a wonderful session on UAE corporate taxation. Around 400 people are on, online with us. And what a what a what a revolution! Corporate tax is coming up soon. That's another geography based opportunity. Gurukul is a project for people who are in industry today. I know Rohit Bhai is here with us, and there are many who could be in from industry, or you will know. Believe me, one thing that is missing is training for chartered accountants. Now the training for chartered accountants that they are not able to give. WRC is standing up and saying, "You can bring your staff here. We'll train for you." So Gurukul at WRC is what we started. You will see emails. There's a startup lab that is my role at WRC that I already found. And then the newsletters are the most interesting space now. And Paraguay, you would be happy to know we have started something on We've been always talking about networking, but effectively, how do we do this networking? We've always been talking about it. So you come here, you sit and you discuss. But now what we've done is we've gone one step ahead. Our newsletters have been revamped. We have launched a section called as a networking zone. So there. I'll give you an example of a person from Ghaziabad. He said, I need four chartered accountants. I need four presence here. He was filing for a tender and he needs presence in Pune. He needs to in Satara, Sangli, and Kolapur. He wrote to us. We put it in the networking zone in last month. Believe me, within seven, eight days, he had all of these people on board. He is now moving on to make a network of around 40 points. Good. Now that's the power of this small little thing called newsletters. Believe me, this distribution of these newsletters is to almost all of you in the email boxes. That is one and a half lakh, two lakh people. But our, it's on website, and it's our website has a, a daily hit of around more than more than around sixteen thousand to seventeen thousand people. So in a, in a month, we cover almost the entire country. So you know, people do look up to WRC. So if you are the ones who are looking who are seeking any opportunity or a partner or a associate or a part or a uh, expert in a particular subject. Networking zone is a one place to you. You can mail, you can write to us at connect or WRC. I think we with the entire power that lies with us is we power to aggregate. We have got super resources everywhere. All we need to do is showcase. We also invited if anyone who is interested in you know making some good tools, softwares, we are happy to invite you because very soon we will have a conference wherein we are only and only giving a space for these people to come and exhibit to all the talent founders. So it's more like a sponsor event for these software people. Chartered accountants will be there as uh, participants, CPE, because sessions will be on, and you'll have an exhibition of these wonderful people, chartered accountants who have software, who have websites, who have tools, and whatnot. Because they're doing an amazing job, believe me. And we need to adopt automation. So these are some of the aspects that we're doing at WRC. Really thankful for each one of you to take out time today, come here. And I'm sure uh, today's would be a, if you're not in a hurry to go home, have some time. We'll arrange food and everything for you, and you know. Yeah, hear these people out because uh, more in questions you'll ask, more interactions you'll have. Probably you'll get the gist out of them because he, they have been talking about this. If you want to understand something, Tata Sand Amko Sikhaya, Prashna Pujdala to Life Jingala. So let's do that. Have a great time. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, Chairman, for the wonderful keynote address. You really even start with today's lecture meeting. And it's a matter of so the author on GST. Years back, uh, years long, they are writing books, but particularly in World Course Accountant, when we had a solo here. Uh, their book, their contribution in GPCT and uh, GST was uh, being picked by the participants just like a hot cat. So today, once again, they are going to have the gift to all the participants and all the members of WRC by ICI. Our chairman is very kind enough to launch this book today. And it will be uh, given to all the participants by e-mode. So it will be uploaded on the uh, WRC website. Anyone can download, anyone can see the um, uh, utilities on GIPCT, GST, and 21, 35 useful charts, which are very useful to all the members, whether into industry or whether into job. So that kind of uh, things are going to unroll today. And uh, I request chairman and uh, dignitaries on the DA uh, 
to unveil the book written by C. Vipul Gandhi and uh, contributed a lot by Avish Pai uh, on uh, opportunities for CAs in Gift City. So, please, please yeah. Maybe John has something like that. Forward your priority. That's right. Yeah. <laughs> There's only one point. Only members who are paid members of WRC will be able to download this now. Uh, not anyone can that. Of course, to download an event, that is another thing. But yes, we are only one. Uh, people uh, to you know who are registered paid members of WRC. Not only CA paid CAs, they can only get this access. So the books will be available, and of course, these are available for sale also. You may pick it up and they will do this. So, you know, we can only two more publications are as Paragra mentioned. It's one beautiful recognized for GST, and there's a useful charts, 21 useful charts. Anything and everything about direct tax and Sam Newton, and this thing will be compiled for Maharashtra. I think even that will be uh, meaning. Thank you very much, Chairman, for giving us an opportunity to serve the uh, professions of our alma mater. And now it's time to hear the views of C. Vipul Gandhi and Amish Pai on different topics. And I request my colleague on the DS, uh, C. Komal Shinde, to come forward and give the introduction of our speakers. Komal, please. Um, so the person I'm going to introduce is Mr. Vipul Gandhi. He's a CA with 22 years of experience in the fields of corporate finance, transaction banking, treasury and forex management, FEMA compliance, management accounting and reporting, AP module and SAP across industries like pharma, pharmaceuticals, engineering and infrastructure. Not only that, he has been associated with Mrs. Kandar Mehta and Shah as a director. He looks after we, uh, various things like corporate advisory services, transaction advisory services, and is also in charge of gift, gift city operations. So please join me to welcome Mr. Vipul Gandhi. I'll ask um, Mr. C. A. Arpit Kabra to give my to Mr. Vipul Gandhi. Yeah. So yeah, also uh give my mondo to Mr. P. A. Amishka. Amish Bhai into practicing chartered accountant. Uh, he is into practice since last two decades. He is a renowned author on a book for GST since the introduction of GST and uh, before that also. And his books are largely um, received well. Received. His views are also well received by members across Gujarat and in WRC also. And uh, many uh, GST authorities are also using his book. Whenever you visit GST department, you will be able to find his book or his uh, ready reckoner on the uh, table of the authority. And uh, he also write book in Gujarati so that uh, people uh, in Gujarat can be very well used, particularly in Mohus areas. So his contribution is very large. So uh, of course, Komal forgot to introduce uh, uh, Amish Pai, but it is my duty to introduce our speaker. Uh, uh, Amish Bhai, uh, welcome to WRC IFM. And now, I request uh, our first speaker, the Vipul Gandhi, to address the participants on the uh, Gift City topic. Please, Vipul Bhai. Yeah. 
Good morning, everyone. Good morning. And it was nice to see this full house. And uh, I'm very bit delighted that we are trial from Ahmedabad to this place because you know, I'm used to give the lectures in Gujarat only. It's a, a really good opportunity uh, given by the WNC, thanks to our big boy Kabra and Parag Birawal also to giving this opportunity. And uh, since uh, it's a happening thing, you know, and uh, uh, this gift city is a new concept. Uh, how is conceptualized? We will go through that. So moving forward with this. Uh, yeah. So we'll cover like this. Uh, what is Gift City? And uh, this is a dual uh, things. What is a Gift City? Which is a multi-service SEZ along with the IFA CEA, which is a Internet of Finance Service Center Authority, which is a combination of all four authorities. And uh, whenever you all go there, you have to take the dual approach, these two authorities, SEZ is the authority with the Development Commissioner Kanda is in charge of that. And IFACA sits over there uh, for all purposes. Then uh, we will go through and run through the benefits and uh, particularly for chartered account like us, what is the benefits and what type of work or what type of services we can render to the clients whether in IFSC or whether in outside IFSC. So basically the ancillary services, which is a prime importance for us. So moving forward. So uh, I will just uh, give you thoughts. So uh, when uh, Honorable Prime Minister, at then CM of Gujarat, he traveled to Singapore and he might have seen the uh, IFSC like this in Singapore. Then he conceptualized that we should have this, this kind of uh, multi-service SEs or other IFSC which kind of DIFC in Dubai and Abu Dhabi and everywhere in London also. So that uh, is started somewhere in 2007. And from there, it has uh, taken off and ILFS was in charge of that. And uh, later on, ILFS get defaulted. And uh, after two, three years, in years, and it was launched in 2016 uh, by creating a Gift City Limited, which is a venture of uh, Gujarat government and the other uh, GMDC kind of thing, right? So uh, this is... Uh, the concept is that there are Mdaw and Gandhinagar are considered as a twin city, which is only 25 kilometers away. And in between then there will be a uh, gift city zone. You can say it's a gift city, not, uh, it would be a town. It would be a different city. It will be a different jurisdiction, foreign jurisdiction. So combination of all these things, as you know, Gandhinagar is a capital of Gujarat where the all ministers are sitting there. Policy has been framed. Mdaw is a, again, uh, like Mumbai, so it's a financial capital of Gujarat. And adding to that, uh, it is a vision of Honorable Prime Minister to have a gift city concept like this. So uh, this is a 886 acres of land. And uh, as you are saying, it's a global thing. He want to rather compare with the all DIFC, where is a ease of business and every, the single regulator for all this RBI, then uh, SEBI, then EDA and PFRDA. All put together, one single authority, IFSCA, who has empowered for all the things. You do not have to run to the RBI and then, then to SEBI and then to EDA and everywhere. So you have a single approval from there. And uh, as you say, it's a strategic uh, location, 12 kilometers from uh, Ahmedabad International Airport and 6 kilometers from Gandhinagar. It would be a part of Delhi Mumbai corridor, industry corridor, metro connectivity is there. If you visit the Gibbs city, then you might find out some uh, uh, metro pillars, which we see in the BKC also. So it will be anyway ready, get ready for another two years. Then connectivity will be great. So you may travel uh, right from the Ahmedabad, wherever. So you, the connect and the last bullet train connected would be also the Ahmedabad, Mumbai. So this is how uh, the entire area was divided. Uh, the commercials is almost 67 percent, residency is 22 percent. And the infrastructure, the supporting infrastructure will be 11%. Uh, so recently it was expanded from 160, uh, 1065 acres to 3387 acres. 
So all surrounding uh, lands have been taken into the gift city for the purpose of development. Because see, uh, when you uh, launch a city, you have to give the all infrastructure facility, including the social one. You have to put some social, uh, the residential tower also. So nowadays there are 20 towers, residential uh, tower uh, approval is there. So it's being developed and all, there are three buildings which are of, uh, in SEZ itself. So all three are the operators and another three or four are coming in another two years. So it is a uh, thing that we say, uh, you can say, if all these three buildings are operational, these uh, three buildings, one is Inanandandi signature, second is a Brigade IFSC, and the third is a uh, Pragya, Pragya Shiri. If all these three becomes operational in the sense, uh, the full presence over there, because uh, till August, only 50% is work from home is allowed by the SEZ authority. If full presence is then, then there is a need of at least 15,000 residential units over there. So you imagine uh, almost if you consider a four uh, person or other two person family, 30,000 or will be residing over there apart from the all supporting things or utilities kind of thing. So uh, in a two years down the line, there will be a population of around 100,000 uh, and it would be a kind of town, right? So there is the uh, vision of the Honorable Prime Minister. So uh, these are key features. Uh, so business dis district is there like uh, Birapur or whatsoever. Then operational smart city, then multi city, uh, multi services, uh, especially economic zone. Uh, then government Gujarat has recently unveiled uh, the 2022 to 2027 IT policy, which is a good uh, incentive, capital incentive, and everything. So, work to work concept and the low attrition. Because, see, if you are in Gandhinagar, then you might find out some uh, issue with the resources. You may not be able to find the resources in the Gandhinagar. If you say, then if anyone has been told that you have to move from Mumbai to Gandhinagar, so that would be some skeptical that they may be not be ready to uh, move over there. But for that purpose, they are developing the all uh, supporting infrastructure and everything. So this is how it is divided: uh, DTA and which is uh, uh, IT and IT ops. Uh, it was there and uh, uh, originally the SEZ. The, for IT ideas, it was operational. Uh, the sunset clause was March 2020, uh, 20, and then uh, the IFSC has been introduced. So for IT companies, it is sunset clause was there. But in IFSC, you can have a IT ideas thing, but only the fintech kind of activities. So uh, typically, this has been divided into two parts: processing area and non-processing area. So IFSC uh, is falling in processing area. Then Technopark, commodity actually exchange like MCX and uh, NAC, BSC, and the Bullion Exchange is also uh, recently in the July 2022 has been unveiled. So insurance, offshore banking, the IBUs, and uh, of all banks, almost seven to eight uh, MNC banks are there. Then KPO, BPO services are there, but you have to give the uh, B2C, not B2B right now. Right. We will discuss later on the uh, coming slides. So non-processing area, uh, as I said, commercial building, office buildings, residential building, then the Narsi Munji school is there, and one of the uh, five-star hotel is there, Gan Makar, then Gift City Club is there. So all supporting uh, activities is there, there. and Kokila and Dhirubhai Ambani, I think KD Hospital is also coming with there, Lilavati is also coming there. So uh, this is how uh, the implementation framework is there. So buildings, it is always uh, developed by developers. And the co-developer, uh, whosoever want to develop over there, uh, as I said, the Iran and Nadi and Brigade and uh, the Pragya, they can develop over there uh, by having a co-developer things and uh, with the development rights for 19 years. And infrastructure gives SEZ and uh, all infrastructure for water management, power and everything. So uh, this is how uh, we can have it. It's a gift city. What you can have, it's a unified regulator, as I said, that is a unified regulator for all four authorities, RBI, SEB, IRDA, and PFRDA. Then tax regime, we will discuss around the, the coming slides. Cost advantage, obviously cost advantage is there because the rent which you are paying in Mumbai may be uh, lesser than in over there. So you have cost advantage over there. Ease of doing business, the single window uh, approval is recently introduced in the 2023, March 23 budget. So you can have a single uh, window approval. Now, SEZ rights have been given to 
the IFSC authority. So you have to go to the only one authority, not to the, but the uh, regulations or guidelines are, are to, yet to come. So uh, supporting uh, ecosystem is there. It's a near to international national airport. So good living, as you said, uh, then if you go to Singapore, if you go to DIFC, you have a single uh, is within the com confined uh, things where you have to live in the city where you have all the things you do not have to go outside that city you have the better life over there so opportunity this is dta so dta as i said you can have a commercial building residential building in dta even though you should have a uh, residential and commercial building in sez also with process in processing area and non-processing area both uh, with a uh, different uh, advantage with different uh, tax structure with different things so you can have a corporate, uh, like, like you are sitting in BKC, many of the corporate office has been moved from Nariman to here and money lines over here. So yesterday we were there. So we have quite changed over there because there was less traffic in the peak hours. Now you have uh, good traffic over here, <laughs> right? So an attractive ITRGS policy, which is capital, uh, capex reimbursement of 25%, then PF reimbursement and uh, all, uh, stuffs are given for the IT uh, companies and the uh, stamp duty is also reimbursed. So this is how uh, the infrastructure is there. So you will find the utility tunnel over here, this one, and the automatic collection uh, and wastage uh, thing, water treatment plant. So for all this, uh, they have uh, created separate companies. So these are the, the uh, command control center and everywhere they can regulate the things. So uh, this is a DTA. DTA in DTA area, there are uh, five towers, you can say, uh, one tower, two tower, and uh, you might be rather dealing with some of the banks who are having a foreign bank office at Gandhinagar, like Bank of Baroda, and many of the banks have uh, their regional office over there. State Bank is coming with their own tower for local aid office, which is in the city area. So it is in the development stage. So uh, these are the area where the all operational banks and everyone who do not want to have a uh, tax advantage on the IFSC side. So this is a commercial development, as I said, uh, Ihanandani Group, Brigade Tower and Pragya. These are the three things which is in IFSC, which is a regulated multi-service SEZ. It's a processing area where you can, or we can have a office over there. We can provide services to our clients, whether in the IFSC itself or outside IFSC, uh, but not in India. So this is social facility, uh, the Brigade Group Hotel is there, Kip City Club is there, Jamna Bay Nursery School is there, and resident building are yet to develop. But the first one is the SOBA, who will come with the uh, position in the next six months. So these are the uh, social infrastructure uh, development, Bakkeri, Silf, Sivalik, who are the local player, and uh, Lilawati Hospital is also coming over there. So as I said, 3,000 plus residential units being allotted over there. And uh, in the recent March, there was a uh, relaxation over the allotment of residents renewed uh, to by people who are not working in SEZ. So there was a concession or other relaxation on the 5,000 units. You can sell or other, not sell, I would say the long-term lease for 99 years to a people who are not working in SEZ. So that's how the all 5,000 units has been sold, uh, now booked till March 30, uh, 2023. So now the other things will get open for the people who will work in the SEZ. So a good opportunity for the investment also, good opportunity for the residential unit also, those who are working over there. So these are the corporates. Uh, you name the things, everyone is there. FDFC Bank, Bank of India, IDB Bank, Bank of Oda, TCS is there, MCX, I said, and the GSC, Tata Chemicals. ILFS, nevertheless, and now it is being uh, taken care by uh, government of India. So these are the all corporates who are working there. So coming to the IFSC, which is, a, I said, uh, it's a unique concept uh, and which is in line with the Singapore IFSC and DIFC. So uh, this is the reason of Honorable Prime Minister. There, when he goes in Singapore, many people were working for India, but through Singapore. So they are earning over there. They are spending over there. So he told, why you are not coming over here? We will set up a, a thing where you can have a, all the things over there. You have the all tax incentive over there. So that was the basic concept uh, that he has uh, raised the things. 
And apart from that, you might have found that uh, banks who are uh, having a branch in uh, London, in Tokyo, in uh, New York, they are raising funds from there for the corporates who are having a presence outside India. So that also uh, sounds not good for the Honorable Prime Minister. That let us have a IBU. Earlier it was an OBU, Overseas Banking Unit. Now it is an IBU, I IFSC Banking Unit. You come over here, you disperse all the things from here. There will be no stamp duty here. You can execute the documents over here. So it's a saving in the stamp duty also. You can have a far east, not rather, rather dial the numbers of the banks at, in the Tokyo or in the London or US for their time. You have a quick return next door uh, things is there. You can fly from Mumbai also. You can have a, take a car and or by road, you can reach to the Gandhinagar and get the things. Uh, every disbursement, every facility is giving you there, whether it's a ECB, whether it's a bias credit, whether it's a supply credit, all foreign funding, it would be available. So that was a primary concept for him. And now it is being rather materialized. So uh, what is IFSC? As I said, it's a uh, jurisdiction outside the economy, which is itself in uh, India also. But for all purpose, it is a, uh, whenever you go there, it is a foreign entity only for FEMA purpose. But for the rest of the things, it is an Indian entity. You should have the GST number, even though it's a zero rated supply, you should have the income tax number, you have to comply with the all MCA uh, compliance and everything is being governed by Indian uh, laws and regulations, except for FEMA, it is a foreign entity. So if you are remitting anything from here, from Mumbai to other say Gandhinagar, then you have to be a compliant for the FEMA, but that entity do not have to comply with the FEMA because it's altogether foreign jurisdiction. So as I said, this is a combination of all this is RBI, SEBI, EDA, and PFRDA. So all combination of this is an authority and uh, sitting on the full two floors. Yeah, please. Am I right? Yeah. Now, now, before we put the phone in the archives, yeah. and from there he remits the fund or he... So any restriction like another account? Have one no, 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 no. They have to open an account, demand account, everything in the gift city itself. He can freely uh, get the funds remitted over from there. No, no, that is not applicable. Even though if I am having a unit over there, because I have to earn everything in foreign currency, as you said in uh, uh, EFC account, we have the rule that at the every month, Whatever is there on the first day of the month, the balance in the year, EFC, you have to spend it out in the, from the end of the next month, right? So that 30 days window is not applicable over there. You can retain the funds in your EFC account. You can have a use of that. You can sell it. You can work, do whatever. Apart from that, uh, at the recent debacle of the SPB Bank in New York, rather uh, Silicon Valley, correct? So many of the startup have opened their account in Get City. Yeah, so there would be no deduction of uh, tax on the interest earned by them. So it is very clear. So there is no doubt about that. So these are the business opportunities, uh, uh, banking, as I said, then FinTech for IT ideas. So you should be delivering any product, IT products to a end user, those who are in BFS sector. So that I know the uh, global in our center, uh, Bank of America has taken uh, on lease almost 14 floor in the Pragya. So their entire GIC is there. So, and aircraft leasing, uh, now moving from Ireland to here, you have the uh, a number of things. In terms of bullion exchange, you can have a, you can import, you can import the gold from the SEZ by paying the duty. So the mechanism would I explain the later on the state, but at a uh, not sell. Any depositor like JP Morgan Standard Chartered can deposit uh, gold over there under their uh, vault. And that would be issuance of BDR, which is a bullion deposit receipt. And that would be traded on I IBX. So from there, uh, the qualified jailers, those who are not in IFSC, they can import the gold, they can trade, they can relinquish the BDR and get the import, uh, get the imported uh, gold released from the SEZ by paying the requested duty. And the uh, Treasury, you can always, and the most important is our thing, ancillary services. So these are the capital markets and uh, offshore banking. As I said, capital market, you can uh, list the securities rather than ADR, GDR. You can list the securities over here. You can trade the securities over here. 
recently the NSC SGX Nifty has been launched over there. Earlier, you can uh, only trade in the SGX Nifty. Now, uh, they are coming with the is a pipeline. In any way, it will be launched in uh, July. So, offshore banking, as I say, corporate banking, ECB lending, so you can service the JVWS factoring also. This is more important. You can have a factoring engagement or other uh, discount of the export receivables from there. And the entities are Indian banks and foreign banks and everyone. So insurance. So everything is covered. You can reinsurance, co-insurance, anything is covered over here. Indian insurance are there. All insurance companies are there. Asset management, the portfolio, which is a typically AIF, which is now in discussion, mutual fund. You can have a PMS also over there. So you can guide them and you can earn the income it is a tax free so fintech global in-house which i said indian bullion exchange aircraft leasing and financing so this is more important for us ancillary services so legal services compliance secretarial we, you we can do everything accounting auditing bookkeeping not typically bpo kpo but it could be a b2c then it is allowed but that client should be in bfs sector that is allowed and management consultancy, even you can also go for the asset management, which is physical asset, you can go for that. So these are uh, international exchange, uh, stock exchanges are there. So going back, this is the ancillary services is, there are so many capital accountant firms who have already set up their offices in deep city, including CLK, MPWC, PT, BDO, and uh, KPMG. KPMG. EY is in the incubation center. We take and maybe aircraft leasing and so many other. But for us, this is very important. I think before the UK, you know, it. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Thank you. So uh, this is the basic ecosystem and uh, what is happening over there. You must be saying in the IFSC, uh, 23 IBUs there and uh, banking size, USD 22 billion stock exchange. So they have a turnover and this exchange never sleep. You can say, uh, I think the tag was the city never sleeps. The same thing was there. Uh, 22 hours of trading is there. You can do whatever arbitrage and everything. So uh, insurance, ancillary services, 33 plus accounting firm are already there. Leasing is also the 15 uh, plus firms are there. Fund management 40 plus AI are there. Fintech 20 plus fintech are there. So even the Singapore dispute resolution form, uh, form is also being allowed over there. So you don't have to go to Singapore for any arbitration uh, thing. You can over, go over there and uh, get settled. So 20,000 plus employees are there uh, till now. So it may reach to 50,000 if the things are relaxed in the forms of BPO and KPO which may be in pipeline and it may be other come out soon. And yesterday, Honorable Prime Minister was there for a visit and you may come out with some good news that issue may be setting up uh, over there, center of excellence over there. It may be there. So it may be uh, because uh, Aniket Bhai has been called up for the meeting. So it may be uh, one of the agenda and uh, you can have a international branch in Gift City also. So uh, this are yeah. Chartered accountant, services, financial legal services. But both in sectors, this will be a foreign entity. Yeah. So they have to provide service to foreign entities. Yes. So they have to provide either in the IFSC itself. So if uh, 500 uh, units are there, they may be in, uh, they may be broker, they may be bank, they may be insurance broker. You can provide services, this kind of services, to any of them. So recipient of services maybe in IFS itself, because IFS itself is a financial services center, right? You may provide such services to a foreign jurisdiction like this, maybe DIFC, maybe in London, maybe in Singapore, those who are there. And apart from that, as I said, B2C. So if your client is BFS sector, right? Banking and uh, financial services thing, then you can also provide through them. So these are the relaxation available there. So recipient of services, everybody is very much defined in the NCLA circular services. Right, so you can uh, provide the service to them. You can enjoy the tax benefit under Section 80 LA out of 10 years, out of 15 years of law. Yeah, but you have to pay the AMT in case of LLP, in MAT, in the case of company. But if your company is under the new regime, then you do not have to pay any MAT also. 
But nevertheless, you can have the uh, tax credit after 10 years, once you get regularized, once you uh, under the normal tax system. Okay. It would be in IFSC. IFSC is an SSA itself. DTA is something uh, which is an area like this, BKC. So it's in support services. So you can provide, you can provide the services to DTA. You have to provide the service in the SAZ itself. Yeah, the units in SAZ itself, in the IFSA itself. So in three uh, buildings like Hiranandani, Pragya, and the BIFC, pretty good. Wherever the units are there, you can provide the services to them. So if they are registered with the IFSC, you can provide the services to them and you are eligible for the tax exemption. But your all revenue should be in foreign currency. There's the first thing, and uh, recently in Rule 53A of uh, IFSC Act, the net foreign exchange earner, which is a primary condition for any registration under SEZ, that has been relaxed. But you should, you may be incurring loss in the initial years. You may not be a net foreign exchange earner also, right? So that uh, condition has been relaxed in the recently and then the week back. So, but the primary condition is that you have to earn all your revenues in the foreign currency. Yeah. No, not defined anywhere. But uh, this IFSC deal with three things: finance, financial products, and financial services. If it is falling under these three, as I said, if you are in fintech, if you are providing some product or services to, say, for example, Bank of America, then then Bank of America itself is in banking, right? If it is an insurance company, then it is okay. If it is a financial service, it is okay. But if you are providing some services to CPA, which is into financial services, but you are catering his client, his or her client, okay, then it is not allowed. It must be B2C and that client should be in BFSI sector. So those overseas entities who are investing in India. Yeah. Maybe. Yes, definitely. They are investing because as an investor, I am also catering some services. If it's an AI, alternative insurance fund, then I may be catering the fund accounting services also. I may be providing the trusteeship services also, which may be falling in the ancillary services. Even you can open a finance company over there. You can have it, uh, the capital advocacy ratio and everything, the minimum own fund, uh, 3 million for uh, uh, this core activity and 0.2 million for the non-core activity. You can uh, borrow the funds. You can lend to them outside India. You can have the all the income, which is net of tax. So there are different regulations and in the books itself, there is a, for all purpose, all regulation, we have provided the QR code. You can scan it because it is not possible to uh, take care of the all guidelines in one book because it's a handbook. That's why. So, yeah. Uh, what is the room for the new entrant? Because it's a saturated position. How is it? No, it's not a, I would not say saturated position. Uh, see. Place is there, right? If you are not find, able to find out the uh, place in any of the fair buildings, then Gift City itself is providing income in uh, place in incubation center. Apart from there, this uh, Pragya is uh, come out with the incubation center. You can have uh, only four or six uh, seat commitment for uh, one year. Later on, when the building is ready, because these three buildings are ready in any time, uh, by the one or half year, okay, you can move from there. So your services will not be disturbed. You can very well go there, but only thing the covered office is like 500 square feet, 5,000 square feet may not be available at 10 because anyway, any new building will, will take another two years. If you see the Pragya, the besides that, they have developing, I think four or five uh, story has already come up. So it may be a 30 story building. You may take the position after the two years. So you can uh, go like that. You can have an incubation center like a business center or so co-working space. So you can go there, you can have an office there with minimum three or two or three people, but whenever they are taking some six people commitment with the X cost. So it may be costly for one year, but later you can move to your office, which may be ranging, I would say, uh, where we have office in BIFC, uh, the uh, lease rental will be 60 uh, per square feet, 60 rupees per square feet, and the minimum uh, nine years is a lease. You can exit after five years, and the escalation after three years is a 10 to 15%, plus plus. But so it's a quite, uh, uh, Comparative good. If you go to Hiranandi, then it's a bucket office, 500 square feet. 
it may be 80 to 90 rupees. When in Pagya, it may be 60 to 70. So depending on your choice, what you would like to go for there, depending on your size, because initially we don't go to for a 500, 5,000 square feet. Initially we will go for 500 square feet. Even if we find the cam office over there, see the merchant, it will be on 1,000 square feet only. So they are, see, if you are in an initial state, you do not see what would be the outcome and what would be the business over there. Because it's a tag. If you are having a uh, office in Gibbs City, it would be, uh, it would be different uh, ball, game, ball game, right? So here we uh, so register from uh, September 20, 129 to 450, employment 8,000, 20,000, number of banks 14 to 23, asset size of banks is 14, uh, or is about billion, 36, and the community banking would be 40, 407. So this is the thing which is developing. If you see uh, when the ancillary services circular was brought in February 21, there was no movement except IBUs. There were only banks and uh, stock brokers and everyone. Once it come in February 21, people like uh, running like anything in February 21 to this, uh, within two years, everything has been packed. So as I said, Bank of America has taken 14 floors. They have been given a separate entry also. So they have the visualization, they have the things, vision that we can grow over here within the same uh, city also. Like Vodafone, what year they have done, they have uh, created even uh, all accounting and every services in Ahmedabad also, correct. So that kind of uh, hub, it is going to be created and it is happening there. Uh, I think uh, BCS recently has uh, so ITF over there in Water Lila. They also conducted tour over there. So it is a good happening thing. I think you should visit once. So have a feel of that. So you can have a better idea what kind of uh, infrastructure, what kind of uh, utilities over there. You can interact with the people also. People who are operational over there, the people who are in the system also, the people who are authorities, they were quite uh, cooperative. They will do guide everything right from the scratch to your operations. So it is not like that. It is something, uh, some bureaucracy. Then you go there and you can complete this, not that kind. So even the whosoever you just email, they will respond. So uh, banking and uh, these are the things: Standard Charter, Deutsche, HSBC, Barclays, City, International Exchange, NSE, uh, India, INEX, which is uh, KPMG, Grant Thornton. We have not kept our name because uh, it is something different. We cannot. So we are also there in BIFC. So uh, these are the banking, as I said, uh, it has reached to uh, number of bank 23 now, uh, it is the in total size this, and 14 Indian banks. Recently, Bank of America, before 15 days, they have taken entire floor for their IFS units. So uh, retail Indian Institute, the Microsoft, and as I said, uh, the it will go live by 3rd July. NSC, IFSC, SGX connect. So you can have the advantage of all these things to add your fingertips and uh, insurance and everything is there. Another uh, thing, NYSE, London Stocking is there. Even the SGX is also there. This is a fun industry. What is SGX? SGX, uh, yeah. So SGX uh, uh, connect. Now uh, at present, you are able to trade only in SGX Nifty, as you said, because SGX Nifty opens somewhere seven or eight o'clock in the morning, and by nine by nine fifteen when the Indian market opens, you have the feel how the market will move. But for this purpose, you can have a, a advantage through NSE. It was a through SGX Nifty. Now you have the advantage of this connect. You can trade over there. You can register over there, and uh, you can have the advantage of the all arbitrage. For the Indian market, but all securities may not be on SGX Nifty. It will be limited for SGX Nifty. So all Indian stocks are not there. Correct. So uh, gradually they will list the good companies, major companies will go listed over there, and the IFSC stock exchange itself. Then you can trade over there. You can fund the account as an Indian resident through LRS, two hundred fifty thousand. But you cannot invest in the Indian companies. That is the basic companies. But you can invest in the SGX Nifty. You can, but at the same time, the taxation will remain same, whatever is the LRS. Yeah, so there would not be any concession for the Indian investor. For the foreign investor, it is a concession, it is tax exams, 
but dividend is tax taxable. But when you go for your global return, then it will be a taxable thing. So uh, these are the funds uh, which are uh, coming over there, and it is there already operating there. So this is the EIF structure uh, where you can have a uh, three things. Trust, trust would be as a fund. Second would be FME, which will be a fund management entity. And third would be uh, your uh, trusteeship services kind of thing. So these are the things uh, are moving. So you can, we could fall under this management, trusteeship. And these are the three categories where you can non-retail, retail and category one, two, three with different exemption, which is already detailed in the book also. So these are glimpses. How can uh, we invest? So foreign investor and Indian investor. Okay. So when we are investing, it would be fall under the LRS, $250,000. And when foreign uh, investor in, uh, invest over there, there will be no limit. They can invest uh, up to their time. So uh, you can invest in IFA security, Indian security, but that would be only as the NFT. Unistop scheme and every Indian mutual fund, which are listed over there, you can uh, invest over there. This is a regulatory, uh, what you can do, Indian party. Uh, so permission to borrow the funds, you can borrow the funds and you can have a uh, leverage over there. Co-investment, you can invest in other scheme also. And uh, investor diversification, you can not invest in 10%, in maximum in 10%. percent is a cap because anyway, investor protection would come into picture. So this is automatic route. Indian party can make a under automatic route. They can invest uh, like this. So remittance by sponsor contribution. So sponsor contribution is a different guideline. You can have a uh, sponsor to that fund also. You can be a trust, primary uh, contributor to the trust. And uh, you can also set up a AI for over there. So if you are, this is the condition for the things. Okay, how can you can, the Indian party can become a uh, sponsor contribution over in EIF. So all is under automatic rule. You do not have to go for the approval. <laughs> So this is how the uh, system will move. Uh, threshold are obviously in USD and existing sponsor and manager can set a branch. If you are operating over here in as a EIF, then you can have a set up branch over there. Apart from then, if you are a operating AIF somewhere outside India, you can relocate that fund over here with the same thing, with same conditions, you can operate over there. Apart from that, uh, if you are investing in uh, through LRS, so many in US, you must be having a uh, exposure to only NASDAQ listed uh, shares. But in this case, you cannot invest in hedge fund, which is short funds or long funds. But typically, because RBI prohibits that. But if you are investing through any fund in uh, IFSC, then that fund can invest in long funds, short funds, and even the hedge funds. So there is a uh, some uh, anomaly is there, but anyway, RBI will overcome with that. Because it is something which is a risky proposal. Because anyway, RBI is not allowing you to uh, invest in some hedge funds, which is a risky proposal. So that could be another advantage. You can uh, go for that. FPI uh, uh, recently, even the Standard Charter Bank recently started as a FPI route. So you can invest uh, through FPI. And any uh, FPI, uh, any uh, fund which is uh, uh, operating from Dubai or wherever, Singapore, they can go for the FPI route through IFSC. So uh, these are the things, banking operation and say trusteeship service, we can always provide accounting firms. We can also provide legal firms for their drafting the memorandum uh, things and the fund administrator, which is FME and the custodians, custodians means the camps and everyone, the CDSL are there to hold the securities, which is investing over there. So uh, this is the aircraft leasing and uh, this is the first uh, aircraft Lease was there uh, in the recent past in 2021. Uh, as you said, Ireland is the hub for this entire thing, aircraft leasing. And you name the uh, airline, they are going through the things. But this is since a good size of business. So, anyway, uh, we would be the third largest globally for the aircraft leasing. 
and uh, nowadays adani or other whosoever is buying fleet for uh, their akasa was there so they are buying for they are buying or other they are leasing get through ifsc the companies which are incorporated in uh, ifsc they are getting list from there so bullion exchange uh, rupee rapta was a project uh, which was uh, in, introduced by the ministry of commerce uh, commerce uh, corporate office and the aircraft leasing was uh, taken as a financial product likewise uh, in 2022 budget 2022 ship leasing was also there also introduced over there but there was no such business over there because ship leasing is a typical uh, product where there is a uh, more nitty gritty on the legal framework but aircraft leasing something uh, going easy because in ireland if they are making the things but at the same time uh, the business has not grown like anything but it is uh, taking a space which may reach to another uh, landmark it was there yes so anyway lease business is also falling under the financial services that has been covered so this is the international bullion exchange where uh, as i said you can uh, anyone who can deposit because any not because nowadays the dwellers are importing the gold through banks they are not allowed to import the gold directly so there is a proposal that they are facing some difficulties if the person in chennai they are maybe importing from chennai banks and everything so the reason is that the gold price should be controlled from this exchange not control but we should have better control over the price so whosoever like as i said jp morgan standard chartered bank gold are in the sepa also they have a gold deposit over there with the vault manager and the every gold or the piece of gold would be converted into pdr bullion deposit receipt and that would be traded in the international bullion exchange so if i am a qualifying jewelers with a net worth of 25 crore plus i to register with the ifsc i can trade that bdr and whenever i want that i want to relinquish that bdr then i can relinquish and get the gold from the scz itself by paying the respect guys custom duty so that has been very much uh, nullified whenever you are rather because see whenever you want to import the gold you have to uh, give the remit advance remittance to bank the same way you have to give the advance remittance to the bank also banks in the ifsc but at the same time when the gold is at the hand okay so you can have the gold at any time by relinquish the bdr in the similar case when you are importing anyway from south africa wherever then you have to uh, give the requisition to bank they will give it into the another uh, gold or other refinery or other gold mines then if you are in queue then you will get the gold that's how the things were moving so nowadays you can have the gold at the, your fingertip i means at the next door even if you uh, in the amdavad jewelers are very much registered over there even the malabar and everyone has been registered over there so they can have the because they are also bullion bank business so this is a facility uh, that they have created so this is a fintech uh, hub uh, you can say and uh, anyway this would be another happening thing because those who are in it its services and those who are providing services to banks and insurance company so this is a good opportunity for them to have a product over there and the uh, visa wise you can have the all uh, tax benefits or uh, whatever is available in the ifsc uh, so here is the area of interest what we do all have domestic fintech hub yeah so domestic fintech hub means if any person operating which is having uh, uh, operationalized before march 2020 and they are into dta or in the scz itself okay so they have collaboration with them they can provide the service to them so in a way you can provide the service to even the domestic fintech who is already operational that activity is also falling part under the ifsc so you can have the all advantage of the whatever the benefits tax exemption available with that so if you are still operational before march 2020 i am a new fintech hub i may not be able to come in that framework but if i am coming with ifsc with a uh, object that i am providing or i am uh, developing some product for you because you are there in this as a fintech right 
even though if you are in DTA, then it is not allowed. But if you are in IFSC, then it is allowed. So FinTech, anyway, I am providing services because I am earning a revenue in foreign currency. So that's how the mechanism is, works like that. So DTA, MOA with uh, domestic FinTech out means if they are getting something because they are also working for uh, some other foreign clients. So if they tie up with the uh, FinTech hub in IFS itself, they can jointly provide the things and have the revenue. Because they are also earning foreign currency. We are also earning foreign currency in IFSC. So that's how the uh, synergic uh, uh, type would be there. So ancillary uh, services, as I said, uh, these are the uh, forms concerning services, PwC, KPMG, GT, uh, then uh, trusteeship, asset management, legal accounting. So these are all big sorts over there. And uh, uh, they are already established over there. So they are enjoying the benefits. Uh, even though the EY is also there, they are in the in incubation center. So even diabetes is also coming. So we can always look into consulting, accounting, legal anywhere. We, it is not our thing. Asset and fund administration is always there. Trusteeship service is all together a different thing because you must be a savvy uh, registered thing in India. You can have it there. You cannot establish a, a new uh, unit over there. So business highlights, I, I, as we said, these are the 2021 things and uh, the short engine, which is in an ecosystem, we already gone through this. I think this is, yeah. These are the key benefits, uh, competitive tax regime, 100% tax exemption, as I say, under ATLA, 10 years out of uh, 15 years. Withholding tax on the 4%, which has been recently amended to 10% in 2023. MAT is 9% and AMT is also 9%. No CTT, no STT, no GST, and no stamp duty. And MAT, as I say, uh, 115 BAA, it is not applicable. So, uh, you need an IFA 100% tax exemption, 10 years out of 15 years. MAT is an AMT 9%, and dividend pay to it is uh, taxable. So, interest income would be taxable at the rate 4%, now it's been to, uh, to 10%. Transfer of specified securities and not trader and get not charged to tax in India. So, in IFSC, uh, no GST, it would be zero rated. If you are bringing any uh, capital goods for setting up of unit, it is tax free, whether it is GST or any import duty, any IGST. If you are importing some goods from uh, outside India, then it will be IGST will not be applicable, custom duty will not be applicable. So, states uh, subsidy, we will go later on that, STT and everything. So currency control, as I said, is it not applicable to FEMA as well. Uh, FEMA Act and liberalize LRS, you can always say uh, ODI, under ODI regulations. So this is basically government of Gujarat ITITS policy. These are the incentives which you can enjoy uh, with capital subsidy 25%. 15% of OPEX in Atma Nidva Rojga Yodna. Contribution is also given by the government. Employee generous incentive also there. Reimbursement 100% electricity duty. Skill development, direct benefit transfer, INF 50,000, ERS, EGI benefit, and early mover. Everything is there. So the basic uh, concept was that. Because you might find every IT, ITA company in either in Hyderabad, in Chennai, in Bangalore, in Pune, in even in Mumbai also. But you never find good IT companies in Gujarat. Right. So for this purpose, they have introduced this scheme. But as we understand that since the prohibition is there, even the prohibition is also in Gift City also. You can do not, do not have any liquor in Gift City. There are rumors every year that it will get relaxed, but it will never get relaxed unless until you achieve the population of 100,000. So for population driven things, it will be there, but not at this stage. So many people, I think you go to the Grand Maker, the hotel, you have the permit because you people in Mumbai have the permit, you can go there and consume your there. But it is not allowed right now. 
So this is the basic thing because any people who are working in Bangalore and get uh, rather transferred to Gandhinagar, they might have some uh, good uh, things that you should have a, some other relaxation on that. But anyway, uh, government is trying to get the good uh, IT people or other good IT units over there. But let us see a uh, way forward. So these are the incentives. You can have the one-time of support of 25%, up to maximum 50 crores. Infrastructure also 50, uh, OPEX also. Then the cloud ecosystem, then you can have this, all these incentives. These are the all things you can have the incentive and subsidy from the Gujarat government. These are non-fiscal uh, incentives uh, where you can have a land and uh, everything get relaxed. So here are uh, the ancillary services. As I said, uh, in 2021, February 2021, the ancillary service was introduced and covering majorly this all services. And I think we are paid for all services. Maybe secretary we can do as a company secretary, but anyway, we can do. Compliance, we can always do. Compliance for the units in SEZ itself, in the IFSC itself. If a unit is there, they have to submit all the things to IFSC also, as well as SEZ also. So monthly reports, quarterly reports, annual reports, you can have a compliance of that. So you can always provide their services. And then those who are uh, rendering services to SEZ people or the manufacturing SEZ thing, same rules are there, except it is a service SEZ. Everything is same. SEZ rules remain same. Everything remains same. The reporting will also remain same. Only thing you have to report on the SEZ online system. Yeah. Uh, can you you can see the providing of service or the import services. So, because I said they, they would be taking the services. See, uh, they can take the services because, anyway, you have to pay in foreign currency, right? As I said, if I am working in Singapore, if I am taking a services of anyone in Ahmedabad. So I can take their services. I can, but at the same time, it is not kind of BPO, KPO. You should not have a resources over there in your own company and you are provide, uh, you are raising a bill over there. It is not something allowed. The basic concept is it should be a new employment generation, new business generation. It is not like that if I am working over here in Mumbai and if I am earning a uh, $200,000, I can shift over there and get the tax exemption. The basic thing is that you go there, you develop the new contract over there, you get the revenue over there, and you will get the tax exemption. Nevertheless, you can provide the unrelated parties, right? It should not be related party. You can uh, give the services or rather take the services of them, and you can pay to them. So see, now the things are relaxed. All are welcome over there, subject to the guidelines. But two years down the line, when income tax comes with your return, if you are availing the ATLA, they will go through with everything. If you are deploying two people and getting the turnover to crore, INA, or foreign currency equivalent, then you will be definitely in crore. Because you will be asked every question, how you are doing, what you are doing, how they have been placed. Every, your servers and everybody will be checked. We advise that, also your unit in IFSC, that you should have a different servers apart from your local office in India. You should have a different mail. You should have a different domain also. Everything should be kept in mind in the future requirement of income tax. So when you are getting 100% tax exemption, everything comes into picture. Uh, they will twist your arm and will get it the things done. Because people are happening because they are working from virtual and they're getting the only for only for billing purpose. They are also creating a firms over there. But now it is there. And they are keeping close eye on that. Even the IFSC, the authority who is giving the uh, permission or the registration, they are also coming for the uh, inspection and everything. They have the all powers. Apart from then the PMLA, the AML guideline, even the KYC guidelines, even the CFT guideline, counterterrorism uh, things, 
everything has been implemented whenever you are going as a new unit. You should have the all policy of AML, KYC of your clients. So it is there, you have to report there. So things are stringent, not easy like DIFC or Singapore, but you have to comply with the things. So it is the ring fencing. You can rather merge your domestic operation with this. It should be ring fence. You should be separate entity. You should have the all books of account different because we are claiming under ATLA. If it is a branch, if I say for our case, we have a branch over there, not typically branch under the ICI regulation because it's within 30 kilometers or 50 kilometers whatsoever, but it is considered as a branch. If I have to remit anything from head office to there, it will be fall under branch expenses. I have to comply with 15% of your average turnover, everything. I have to comply with that. So is that the reason why they are sometimes insisting on the minimum number of See, they say, uh, see, since it is an object of two things, one is a revenue generation, second is the employment generation. So for employment generation, they will say, okay, you should come out with two or three employees. Before you go to apply to the SEZ authority, the IFSC authority, you have to mention that what turnover you are expecting down the line five years, what type of, what number of employment you are generating, even though in the, also the segregation of that, how will, how many women would be applied that are deployed over there. So this is the all nitty gritty. you have to rather mention all that. Not critically, they are rather uh, observing or monitoring it. But when you are being interviewed at the USC, yes. You have been interviewed there in USC Unit Approval Committee, which is conducted by uh, uh, DC office, Development Commission office, every alternate uh, Wednesday. Then you have to apply in the form F through SEN. I will go through that. And apart from that, IFSC also. So you have been interviewed like anything, uh, you because it is a tax exemption. In GST exemption also. So it's a revenue loss to the government. So then they are giving that incentive. They should also ensure that the employment and the regeneration, revenue generation should be there. Which they are not uh, insisting on local employment. No, they are. They are not forcing. Not, not forcing. Not honestly. Because you can uh, rather deploy two people from here also. So uh, deliberately, the detailed things, they just service what you can provide documentation, compliance, bookkeeping, with other things you can provide over from there. So R2R R and everything which we are typically doing in the KPO and everything, but we can provide that. But it's not like that BPO, KPO, you are um, employing 300, 500 people over there. You are taking what you are operating in India, rather India bound. You uh, you are going there for the tax exemption, unless and until it is clarified by the authority that it is allowed permissible activity. So compliance and secretarial, these are taxation services. So I think many people are also providing taxation service to U.S. clients, U.K. clients, even the Australian clients also. So you can do that. Even the fund management also, you can do that. So this is the accounting or you can also certify the things from there also. Okay, but I think uh, ICI is uh, allowing us to certify uh, Paragbi and to certify foreign accounts, no. We can. And also there is a good opportunity at IFSC which is recently uh, will by the people then uh, if you are in ifrs uh, restatement or other recasting then the, all banks which i mentioned 23 banks are there and many of the seven or eight banks are in mnc banks so they have to adhere to the ifrs convergence so if they are balanced in root because anyway they have to draw the balance in foreign currency also but as per ifrs so this is a good opportunity if you are good in uh, ifrs then you can always get a chance to get the assignment for there. So IFRS conversion is a good area where you can practice, which you are, if you are in uh, currently in that practice. So these are the professional services, uh, which I said and within IFSC, right? So that you can always provide outside India or in IFSC.
so this is marketing management consulting though we are not uh, good at but uh, we all see are also good market guy and you we are on finance but we are good at marketing also so we can always provide that services but within the but all the things keep in mind it will be finance financial products and financial services any kind of marketing which is related to that it is allowed this is administrative services asset management and trust asset services which we discussed earlier so these are the eligible i think i taken more time yeah should i continue or rather run through the things and so uh, these are the eligible conditions any see when you are you are going there if i am a farmer chaudhary i should go as a branch or else if i want to uh, leave apart because there are two things because from here i have to remit the funds as a branch expense or as a my capital contribution if i am having a llp over there independent llp over there other to buy forget all the things i do not want to hodge podge my current operation indian operation with the gift city operation then i should keep the llp as a separate thing then as a partner i have to rather remit the funds under odi if it is a branch then i have to remit the funds as a branch expense these are two category as a charter accountants apart from that also you are coming as a different llp or different private limited company then you have to they have to go comply with the fema guidelines so this is the service which is more important this is more important where we can provide the services the service recipient so entity set up in ifsc entity is from foreign jurisdiction for various public service services and indian i propose to open so we can provide the services if i want to open a uh, unit in ifsc then if you are in ifsc then you can provide the services to me and i you can charge the uh, things in foreign currency so that's how it is allowed currency would be any currency except rupee indian rupee so rather we manage the odi then you need to know the compliance odi form one or from here the partner works domestic because as a partner i am in indian resident i am contributing as a my capital contribution then i have to uh, uh, follow the all the odi guidelines yeah first yeah Is the understanding correct that my service is the only B two C? Yes. Yeah. So when I can they engage me for the service? Yes. B two is it not B two B then? No. See, I am mentioning B two C. The C it will be covered here. In IFSC, if an airline air leasing company is in IFSC, it will be covered here. If it is operating any foreign jurisdiction, it will be covered here. Why I mention in IFSC B two C B two C means directly to the client. Air air leasing company or other aircraft company is my client. Is my direct client. Why I mention B two B what? Because if I am providing service to any CPA, CPA in Australia, right? So that is not eligible. Yeah. So that's why B two B because typically BPO to, this is to restrict the BPO KPO activities at time, this time. Maybe relax in the coming months, but at this juncture you cannot provide. If a uh, Accenture or other also ever like Manubai Sai and company or uh, even the uh, integrity who those who are in BPO KPO aggressively, they cannot do over here except the client is in BFS sector. If they are in mortal, if they are in store, you can know. If you are doing any tax services, any accounting services, any bookkeeping services, then I cannot do this. When we when we say that the guidelines require to receive money for it, right? So how do I incur? local is correct that's a good question i'm going there yeah so mechanism is like that you have to open two account one is foreign currency to receive all your revenues second would be snrr account the specially designated rupee account it would be open in dta the bank in dta the foreign currency account will be open in ifsc in uh, ifsc itself so whenever i remit 
towards the initial expense of branch or initial expense of LLB or the capital contribution as a partner. Then I have to remit under ODI in the foreign currency itself. They will receive the foreign currency in the foreign currency account. Then I have to submit to the that bank that I need to pay something in rupee, which would be my salary, which would be my furniture, which would be my fixtures, which would be my uh, fit out of all my offices in the initial thing. Later on, I have to pay the salary, everything. From there, I have to give the entire estimate. These are my monthly recurring, even the lease rental also, in the utility also. So I have to give the estimate, this much I need. You give me the permission. Then from that foreign currency account, I have to remit as an outward remittance to my SNR account. From there, I can pay the things. So you have to maintain the books in foreign currency, but for your income tax return purpose, it is something I know. So what we are getting as a revenue nowadays in my BKC office, they have to anyway convert into INA at the foreign exchange rate prevailing on the date of transaction. So that's how I can manage the things. Anyway, this is something cumbersome that I have to go for the two accounts. I have to maintain two accounts. I have to go to the bank, get it payment done. So these are the things, but get maybe get relaxed over a period of time. <laughs> Pay the requirement to maintain two accounts like SNR account. In a way, we are saying that FEMA. Yes, FEMA is there. Yeah, it is happening there because it is for the foreign exchange control itself. Anyhow, FEMA is not there, but the regulator is there. RBI is there, SEBI is there, PFRD is there, IDA is there. So, combination of all four is IFSC. So, anyway, indirectly, they are taking care of that. FEMA, anyway, comes under RBI, but we are saying it is a foreign entity. No FEMA is applicable. But anyway, it is applicable in time. Yeah. Yeah. So, will I not be using the forex currency exchange rate when I will transfer the coin to the to ODI and then convert that? Yes. Yes. It should be made. It could not be any matching rate. If I am remitting at 83, if I am getting converted at 82, when I am maintaining my uh, everything, lease and everything, then it should be a loss. Every say loss. So anyway, if I'm see, if I have a, a net exposure, okay, for a you can say uh, natural hedge. If I am in a uh, foreign currency account and uh, hundred thousand dollar is my revenue and fifty thousand is all my import expenses. So for the purpose of balance in EFC, I have to go for the net exposure. Correct. So that how I can natural have a natural hedge. If I have a thousand dollar, hundred thousand revenue in uh, my EFC account, 50,000 in my outgo, then I can maintain 50,000 or I, I can convert that. So that's why I have natural aid. But here I am do not have any natural aid. Because anyway, I can pay in foreign currency to my overseas service provider whatsoever. But for that purpose, I can maintain the balance in foreign currency. But for the rest of the rupee expenses, I have to transfer to the SNR account where you have the foreign exchange rate. But at the same time, you can you cannot rather having a hedging over there because it will be in the minimum account. If it is some good amount, then you can have a hedge over there. Then you can book the thing for every month. If I'm getting a uh, revenue, fixed revenue every month, then I can always get a uh, hedge over there for uh, conversing the things, 82, 85, whatsoever. Exactly, exactly. That will be cost. You may be gaining, if I'm converting at 81, uh, as a ODI remittance, it would be in my books as a partner. But in their book, it would be 81. It may be 82 at the time of remittance. Yeah. See. Then in the case of deficit, your partners or the parent company has to fund that by virtue of ODI remittance. Yeah, it's a loss making, then you have to make a good way. Then if you are in profit, then you can always repatriate that funds to your partners in the same way. Normal repatriation, yes. So these are the uh, submission reports uh, you have to submit to IFSC. More important is the fees. Uh, the LRS one. Okay. So in LRS, there is some exemption. But 
if I am revenuing from India, then obviously it covers under that. Yes, it would be. Yes, it would be applicable. Yes. Financial needs to be prepared in foreign currency. Financial, see, for, for the purpose of IFSCA, you have to prepare in foreign currency for their submission. For the local submission, as you said, you have to prepare in INA. For the purpose of uh, income tax IDR reporting or IDR filing, you have to prepare in INA. So as I say that if you are operating in any SEZ in India, in your manufacturing SEZ, if I am having a unit in DTA also, then consolidation will be there. Only thing is that now the SEZ, ATIA or whatsoever is not available right now. So for that purpose, we are maintaining a separate account. We are also getting uh, some certificates from the chartered account run for the purpose of claiming an exemption for the SEZ unit. So for that purpose, in ATLA, you have to rather have a CA certificate for the claiming the exemption. Yes, sir. So in the exemption, pardon? Everything would be applicable. IFR is only for banks, not for us. Yeah. Yes, I'm not for compliance purpose. See, LLP in foreign jurisdiction, right? Foreign entity, having income tax, Indian income tax, pen, right? So for the purpose of ITR, you have to maintain in rupee, correct? And for the purpose of reporting to the respective authority, it would be in foreign currency. So recently we have come across the case uh, for a bank having a uh, branch office in India or other operation in India. They are having a unit in IFSC. And the, for the both purpose, their auditors are different. So how a tax auditor would report that? That will question to us how they will report. So simplify either I have to get the things consolidated and get the reported things or the audit of that and they have a separate report. On that basis, I have to report the tax audit because as a tax auditor, I am a only single or tax auditor for both the entities. Having a single pen, not different pen, having a single pen. So these are the practical difficulties are there for the reporting. So they are one thing, you have to uh, have a consolidated report, auditor reports for the other certification. Secondly, typically tax audit report, you can have to annex two things, annexer one and annexer two. One would be the IBU, IFSC unit. Second would be Indian operation. One may be in foreign currency because they will certify in foreign currency. One would be in INA. You have to convert everything in INA and get the tax audit report. So these are the practical difficulties which may overcome by, by period of time. So fees is applicable with five hundred dollar. You can pay in equivalent rupee also through uh, any of the authorization fee for activities of two thousand dollar. So as I said, these are all considered as separate activities. These all are. If you are going for professional services and taxation services and compliance, then you have to pay six thousand dollar. So before going to uh, IFSC, we have to decide. I will provide only these services, advisory and compliance, that's all. Later I can other expand. And apart from there, you have to pay to uh, SEZ also at the time of application 5,000 uh, DD and 25,000 registration, yes. Yes. Right now there is no such guideline. Uh, yes, dual registration, everything is dual. You have to go to IFSC, you have to go to SEZ, you have to go on the parallel lines and uh, dual. Yes, yes, sir. Yeah, both the authorities. Yes, it will be done away, but there is no such guideline. Recently, last week, I met the development commissioner. They said, I am ready to give hand over everything. I am ready to hand over everything, but my SEZ Act should be complied. I will not take care of that. Then you need an IFSA to take care of that. So there are also uh, differences of opinion and that's why the uh, guideline has been ordered after two months or so. So these are glimpses uh, which were uh, already covered. So what you can do, what you can do, right? Uh, these are the services you can uh, typically, these are opportunities for us.
So this is a typically process. How can you go there? So you have to identify the space, 500 square feet, 5,000 square feet, whatsoever. You go to the uh, co-developer, you ask them, I want to buy this. Okay, I have to get it, this, this. Okay, so they will issue the letter of intent. On the basis of letter of intent, I have to go for the registration of that unit as a separate entity. If it is a branch, people like us, then it's okay. But if I'm working for a, any client, then I have to go for that. Then name of everybody is there in MCA. And as you say, as you now experience that MCA portal is behaving like anything. Mm -hmm. So it may not be available, it may be available. Then after that, once you get the things, you have to incorporate that company. You get the pen. With that incorporation certificate, with that pen, I have to apply in form F to SEZ authority, as well as to the IFSC authority, simultaneously. Then I have uh, SEZ authority, uh, Development Commissioner uh, Office will call for USC, Unit Approval Committee. And it may be physical, it may be virtual because one people is sitting outside in the, they may not come uh, in physical. So you will be get interviewed. It will be only 15 minutes interview. What you are doing, you have to present your profile what you are doing right now and what you are proposed to do in the IFSC. Then IFSC also take a separate interview. They will call for an interview. They will basically understand in which it would be micro detailing, not kind of SEZ. They would go under everything. What, would, what are your current clients? What you are doing right now? What you will do? What your contracts and everything? Not in uh, physical form, but they will get interview. So after all this, after paying all fees, if you are fortunate enough, then you will get the registration within one or two months. Then, once I get the approval, in principle approval from IFSC, and SEZ will issue a letter of approval, then I have to go for the lease agreement. From lease agreement, once it is executed, then I have to go for the GST registration, separate GST registration, which will be more critical because we feel that it is a nearby thing, 30 kilometers away. I should not have a, uh, any separate registration, but it should be a separate registration because the SEZ is a registration. Compliance would be different. Even the recent thing, DGFT Deputy Director demonstrated that the ice gate would be uh, separate for the SEZ units in IFSC. So that would be different compliance also. So once you get the with the list deed, with the GSC registration, and as you say, might be experiencing that the GSC registration is a hell of things, may not be able to get it quickly, but we have to go for that. After that, you have to go for the account opening and everything. Then uh, registration with DGFT, IEC, RCMC, everything, and the bank accounts. After all this put together, then you can start the operations. Simultaneously, you can have the radio of your office because it will be a zero ground with four walls. You get the your furniture and fixture get created. So before you go there, then you have to, then another custom procedure is also there. Then whenever you appoint a new vendor, if they are bringing some material tiles, some furniture, some fixtures, some chairs, some tables, then you have to appoint a new vendor, submit to the customs give the PO over there. Once the invoice comes over there, they will make the PO, they will make the invoices, then the goods will be allowed in. So typically what we are experiencing, the typical manufacturing SEZ, same process would be get followed. So once the office is ready, normally they are giving six one time. Now they have reduced to three months. So all these procedures need to be completed within three months. If it is not completed, then you have to go for the, again for the extension. Uh, quoting the reasons, valid reasons why it is not, not, not happening. So once you say, okay, I am there, I am after two years, I am not able to generate the revenues. So as I see, said that if I am in loss, then I, what should I do? Then I should shut down. So when I get shut down, I have to get exit from there. So from exit perspective, so when it's RBI, you have to report to RBI. Then I'm getting exist if I'm my LLP and uh, branch whatsoever. From SEZ, it's a typical uh, process. Uh, whatever I got as an exemption, whether it's a GST, whether it's an import duty, even from there, the stamp duty exemption also. Because you know, on lease agreement, that will not be any stamp duty, it's a state exemption. So I have to get it refunded and with interest. Or... So 
as I said, depreciation and everything would be, I have to get it refunded. So in my books, in, in cash terms and everything. Uh, friends, uh, since you are finding this session very interesting, uh, we are continuing uh, with the speaker and uh, he will also take up the question answer. And uh, we may have a only little uh, next topic. Very, uh, we will uh, cut it short because it is also GST and GST is not the new topic. So let uh, uh, we will be uh, continuing with the session. We will be please. Thank you. So, uh, LO is value of one year and every year you have to renew it. It will be three years exemption, uh, extended period, and it will be total five years. Right. So, uh, consequences. So, so, there are n number of consequences. See, if the approval committee uh, cancels it, if I'm not next for an exchange or not, if the SEJ development commissioner finds that I am not a good performer as a unit, then they may cancel my registration. This is first thing. Second is the Sumomoto, because I am not able to find good revenue. I am not able to able to rather take it uh, further, further at the sake of loss. Then I get the exit. So as I said, all this exemption should be refunded back. And obviously, I can always if the board of approval, if they are getting a uh, cancellation, then I can appeal to the board of approval, which is sitting in Delhi. So these are the key amendments, uh, as I said, the single unit, single window approval. Okay, the guideline yet to come. And the surcharge and everything is not applicable. And the uh, dividend income, this is more important, the 4%, the 20% is a 10%. The offshore derivative and the concessional rate. <laughs> So that was four percent bring to this one. So IPUs which were operating uh, um, non-resident and ten percent. Somebody is non-resident now in Dubai. Suppose you now do the through the IFSC and invest the money. So when uh, we we uh, deduct the TDS and dividend amount, it will be ten percent. Yes, yes, yes. Advantage you will have. Yes, that advantage we have. So as I said, if I say relocation, then everything would be get uh, continued. So offshore banking, if they are complete, it was a fifth. See, uh, in March twenty, when the sunset clause was there, so the tax exemption was for. 100% for five years and 50% for another five years. So IBUs are all before that. So they have been relaxed that you can continue with that for the balance period. So tonnet tax is a, but simply any note happening over there, but they uh, still come up with the holiday things. So aircraft leasing, uh, so operations should be started in 2026. And the dividend will be anyway uh, exempts. And the TCS, uh, what uh, I think you say, 5 to 20 percent. So, these are, uh, I think this is would be anyway, the foreign education medical treatment has been exempted, but it would be quite cumbersome for the people who are emitting nowadays to the ODA and everything. So, the only thing why government is curbing that to discourage this, because see, nowadays we are other uh, floating companies overseas. We are funding here from here to there, and from there the funds are siphoning. But to curb that, they are coming with it. Anyway, for those uh, intentions, it would not be come down 5 to 20 percent, but it is a something quite heavy because I think it was introduced some in 2021 from October 21, 5 percent. Now it comes to 20 percent. Certain company who is uh, uh, financing for the education loan. Yeah. Are they present over there and is it? But the education loan should be dispersed to person outside India. Yeah, yeah that's true. Yeah. So, 
Correct. So that will come in near future because see, foreign universities are allowed to be there in their campus. So I think one of the Austrian universities has agreed for, and entered into MOU with the Gibbs City Authority. Once they come, then it definitely will help to the students. Because they do not have to go to the Indian counterpart and get the funds borrowed and get the payment to the Austrian University. Straight away in the within IFSC, you will get settled. Yeah. For that, you have to be in IFSC. Now, as a student, I can register with the foreign university. If I want to make a payment, then I can borrow from that uh, finance company. Because uh, as a because once I am there as a qualified jeweler. Though I am not having any presence in IFSC, but I can still import the gold. Regulated by IFSC, but not having any presence over there. So that's how it will work. If I'm a student, if I'm coming to that foreign university campus in Gibbs City, I can borrow from, from the units or the finance company from the IFSC itself to have a, a natural or other less, uh, rather expense or less loss or gain on the foreign exchange part. So they may be have a tie because nowadays we see in the some of the building or some of the commercial scheme, they have put a, a board that I, we have a, this scheme is approved by State Bank of India, Kota Bank, DFC Bank. Same way, they have a tie up with the financing company, the university whatsoever coming, maybe with the banks, maybe with the finance company. So you can have a better uh, rate, better uh, uh, conditions, everything. This will not be treated as the ECB kind, external commercial borrowing. Which one? If I am not in the IFSC, See, I'm if as an Indian student, I am an Indian party. Yes. Okay. So if I'm borrowing, it would be a foreign loan. Yeah. It would be a foreign loan. Foreign loan. Certainly, yes. ECB. Uh, ECB in a kind, yes. ECB, but in that would be also relaxed because every student cannot go and go and filing ECB one or two. Yeah. Every yes, month. Sir. It will be certainly not. Yes. But they will come out with the guidelines, which will be more rather. Uh, uh, quite friendly with the students also. Yeah. So with this, I am concluding. Uh, I think any questions uh, I can take up. Yeah. Is provision extended to OPC as well? Which one? OPC, one person company. Which one? One person company. Can one incorporate a OPC? No. 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 Second question is, suppose I am um, delivering my services to a client in Australia. So will that fall under this criteria? Yes, but only thing is that the recipient of services should be in BFSI sector. Okay. Yeah. No, other no other. If I am providing services, accounting service, tax services to a model, to a stores, super stores, somewhere in Australia, US, then it is not qualified. Even though I am providing a financial services, but by virtue of that service recipient guideline or other definition, I am not. Uh, it is not a permissible activity. But as I said. To rather uh, with a, a growth in the employment, everything, they will shortly come out with this modification or this relaxation where I am providing any services to a CPA, but that CPA in turn is providing to BFSI, then that will be allowed. In an IT sector, to a company put located in Dubai. Right. Will that <coughs> so that IT company could be in BFSI. If it is a bank, if it is a bank, if it is some SEP provided, uh, SEP license company or something there, then it will be provided. That will be allowed. So it is something when you get interviewed, they will ask this number of questions. To whom will you provide? They will rather uh, take it a not, okay, this will not have a permissible, this is permissible, this is not permissible. They will not into go into detail, but by virtue of that, they will go into the client list. Who are your present clients? Who are future clients to whom we are providing your services? So by that they will go for this, and they will scrutinize that. And by basis on that they will get the approval. In principle approval. See, in SEZ Development Commission office, not going in detail, it will take only 15 minutes to get it interviewed because there are n number of people lining up every every alternate Wednesday. There are 15 or 20 companies lined up for the USC interview. But in IFSCA. You should be more vigilant. You should be quite well prepared for everything. So if they are go going through that, then you are gone. You are okay with that. It's a abhimanyu na sat kotha, that kind of thing. You have to go by that.
but it is not that much stringent. If you're a good proposal, if you're a good client, you have a good legacy, then uh, you are okay with that. Well, as a chartered accountant, we are already there. Present. So, how is your experience? What is your what kind of the services will uh, be your plan? We will cover the services with the IFSC unit itself because those coming uh, to establish as a chartered accountant or as a, a other unit like finance company or AIF, we are giving their services. Apart from that, those clients who are serving outside India. Right, because we have uh, growing like uh, so. For that purpose, new client would be added over here in the current financial year. So that will be served from there. Question as to whether the FZE incorporation compared to uh, SEZ in New uh, City, uh, how do you take this uh, uh, for the merchant export kind of an activity? I think uh, goods are not allowed. Simple. Goods are not only services. Only services. No, even the, both go together. SEZ, multi services, SEZ only. No products. No products, no manufacturing, nothing. No warehousing, nothing. At the same time, IFSC. So it is in correlation or in sync with the SEZ. So both together, go together. Everything would be developable and would be for finance, financial service, and financial products. Ah, no products. Oh, they could from finance company. It has to be registered over there. They should have a campus over there. That would be a physical learning over there. It would not be anything virtual. So, no, no. So it is not like that you go to the gift city or FSC and give the loan for some, some your personal loan in a foreign currency. It is not allowed. So as he said, it is an ECB kind of thing. Correct. So as an individual, they will not entertain me. Yeah, it is in DTA. It is in DTA. Yeah, because it is support services. Lilavati Hospital is coming for the support services. In the uh, five star water or grandma tree is there, it is about support services. Yeah. So, even the residential projects also. So, in the residential projects also, uh, they will come with no tax exemption. If I am developing any project in processing area, there would not be any tax exemption except GST. I cannot charge GST to my residential unit holder, provided they are eligible for to take that unit. They are working in SEZ before March. It may be that if you are not working in SEZ, you can take a unit over there. But nowadays, you cannot take, except you are working in SEZ. Short, Institutions and people like us. Because see, whenever you go in any city, it should be an ecosystem of both the things, or not only services. In manufacturing SEZ, you never find the residential units whatsoever. But when it is typically service as is it, then the service people, which is based on your, because see, we people as a chartered account, highly dependent on the resources. If I'm two resources gone out, then I am be handicapped. So in that case, my resources should stay over there. They should provide the services. They should go to one and take uh, the office very early because it is the same as is it. So for that purpose, they are creating all facilities over there. So they should not go out of their SEZ. It will be the within premises. Service platform, standard platform for every generation. Yes. Because see, I am the only party, not only the tax exemption. At the same time, I should also think about my cost also. If I am relocating, if people are in Mumbai relocating five people over there, they will come out with some plus hike, right? You have to provide the accommodation, you have to provide everything. So what we understand, what we suggest, Unless and until you have an income of two or three crores in foreign currency in INR, unless and until you should not move. Otherwise, it would be a break even things. If you have a, a vision or a favor, something in pipeline that you are growing like anything, then you can definitely go there. And because, see, initial two years, you do not go for the ATLA. After two years, go for the ATLA. Once you get stabilized, you are earning the profit. 
for the five years also you can earn. In the last 10 years, you get the exemption. So that's why they have provided 10 years out of 15 years. Network of Saturday can move. Network, again, a question to be addressed by ICI. Okay. So, network, anyway, which is not allowed, I, I think so. I think perhaps we may correct. Yes, but they are not approving. <laughs> if they are approved, then you can always go there. Because network is the office always over there across India, you can always go there. Startup, start uh, if it is fintech, then okay, you can. For that purpose, uh, uh, I think in my book, uh, there is a sandbox concept. So if you are coming with new concept, new products, then they will put into sandbox for, for one year. They would, you have to disclose everything to them. Okay, this is my things. If it found okay, if it is good enough, then they allow you to launch the things. So many ID ideas coming with the sandbox, but they are good enough to rather convince the people. There are people, all officers with respective uh, service line who are expert on that. Even though some people are on deputation also in financial services, some from ICSI also, from the bank also, so they are on deputation. So they will go to entire things, what you are doing, what you are not doing, what will be allowed, what will be not allowed. So what do you see after 10 years, 15 years? Projections of I would see in 2025, it would be happening one. By that time, many of the buildings would be come out. You will be enough space to move on. Apart from the, the infrastructure facility also, I think in the recent past, uh, Singapore ambassador was come uh, to meet the people over there and uh, he just commented at the yes. evening it is a ghost city so that comment has gone to the PMO and PMO yes. has acted like anything and uh, principal secretary Mr. Sir has visited personally he has gone to every office every office to check that whether they are operational or not and if uh, some uh, offices are vacant they have inquired with the developer with the gift city why it is not happening either get them operational or cancel the approval. So that's how the approach was there. So it will be happening, definitely happening. Within two years, it will be a different uh, kind of thing. And uh, you have the all connectivity uh, because nowadays people are feeling that, okay, if I want to stay over there, there is no facility. By that time, you have the facility to stay over there. You can have the work over there. You can commit from there. So it is easy because it's 12 kilometers. Anyway, if you are going from here to Santa Cruz Airport, it's another kilometer. So that's how, if you are uh, there, then it would be definitely advantage for everyone. But as I said, you should have a enough size. You should go before, uh, before that you should have a cost benefit analysis. You have to put all contingency over there. You should have the readiness of the people to move over there or other to rather uh, recruit from the local thing. Gandhi, yeah. Abhi to <laughs> so the same question was been asked in the Vakao also, whether it will be in Hyderabad also, we will tell uh, uh, K. Sankar, I think K. Rao, that uh, you bring this over here. But right now, IFSC will remain there, but it may come out with multi services as in coming days. But anyway, as is a concept, would be anyway, uh, would we get remorse in uh, when the dash is coming? Could you take second? I do not see. I do not see. BKC is something different. They say BKC is a corporate hub. And because Mumbai is well connected and it's a financial hub since years, it could not be created overnight. Because it's a 2016 and it get operation only 2020. So it will take time. It could not be uh, BKC in any other 10 years. IFSC was planning BKC itself, but due to some political thing, it moved to Gandhi Yeah, yeah. Can we talk about Dubai and all the things? Yes. Yes, yes. Yes, yes. in the fund regulation, it is there. The uh, fund family office could be there, but uh, you have to be a contributor from that family only. Everything has been pres uh, prescribed. Yeah, that is, that is allowed. So it is like of AIF. 
the same fund you can operate as a family office. So it's a family fund, you can say. Family fund, yeah. Okay. Exactly, exactly, yeah. But it would be family fund, family office, yes. Would this be more convenient for the people staying in Ahmedabad and Gandhi Yes, this is more convenient. And I would like to add to one question. What you ask, what you see uh, next two years down the line, right? So it is a question uh, whether we are in deep city or we are otherwise anywhere. Because we are not getting article students, we are not getting chartered accountants before our hiring, McKinsey, Accenture, FinTech companies who are funded with money, then outsourcing is coming in a big way, three and a half lakh uh, CPS. If you have read in some research report, they have left their practice in USA, not, they have taken goodwill, they have given one lakh dollar that I'll give to Rasmin, they, okay, you are young, you carry on to my clients who have, whom I have served since 30 years. And I'll give you two lakh dollars, not I'm taking. So this is the reality in USA. So, so much work is coming to India. We have young force and all that. Having said all these, and the opportunities that Vipulbhai has also discussed, to give it a practical view, because ours is a uh, mid-sized firm having 50, 55 chartered accountants, 200 people. And some of you might have visited our World Congress call also, KMS. But... And I was there in 2018 also in Sydney, World Congress was there. So if we don't have vision, now is a time that we all will be very much redundant. We chartered accountants are working or doing the scope of work, which is for MCOM or inter CA and all that. And there's so much compliance that is coming. And industry and government has full assurance and faith that no, we will do any work, whichever is imposed on us. So now we have to create that ecosystem wherein we do quality work. We, you, as rightly said by Arpit Kabra, that we are one of the finest brain, but what we are doing. And we have to do it because we don't have size. Replying to your question, 2025, if there is two people, two partners from small firm, having, I think, we could buy one lakh rupees or 1.25 lakhs rupees per month, at least the expense will be there. So under 15 lakhs, because we all are accountants, yeah. we know that if it is yearly expense of 15 lakhs, how much work we have to get, suppose our 50, 60%, 50% is our profitability ratio, then 30 lakhs work is to be, is to be obtained. So 30 lakhs plus commuting from here to there and putting all these small firms are going to 80% business, not only in services, now, services, our profession has also become capex intensive. Up to 3 crore ka office low, lakh rupee, 2 lakh, 3 lakh rupee ke low, low HR, system admins, all softwares. And above all, we have to be updated. We have to be a, an age ahead. So all said and done, those 30, 40 lakhs work that we have to, we have to take from the market. So unless we have a network or we have a big firm, like merging of small firms, we will not be able to reach or we will not able to attract good clients, good articles, good chartered accountants. Because chartered accountants are not preferring to work in a CA firm, by and large, except you have a big brand, big tag, <laughs> cited Goa and your induction kit, your HR training and all that. So compared to all that, it is very difficult nowadays that we can affect rather. There are third generation chartered accountants uh, firms or generations whose third generation is joining before. There are at least, there will be 1000 CA firms or CA. In my group only, there are 25, 50 people. So all this said and done, unless we collaborate each other, unless we consolidate, unless we merge each other, uh, each other and more so with youngsters. If you are 50 plus, I've given lectures on this in Paragbhai's uh, different forums at Ahmedabad also. So if we are 50 plus, it is okay. There is not much problem that we can get as accustomed to someone else. But for someone who is anywhere between 25 to 45, this is a race or this is a challenge that they will have to win over a period of time. So they will have to merge with someone or rather mm -hmm. if, we, if we can acquire someone, okay. Otherwise we will be acquired not only by CAs or maybe other tech firms. Big Cora is telling that our competitor is not CA firms, our competitor is 
tax technology comes. Technology is going to be so much disruptive that uh, perhaps, uh, and one last sentence that I would like to add is, this is the golden time of India, next 20 years. If we rightly place ourselves, if we rightly take our position, we envision what is going to happen in the next 5, 10, 15, 20 years. Put right efforts, right direction, and with vision, these 10 to 15 years will give us 50 years growth. 50 years. 15 years work will give us the money, name, recognition, and everything of 50 years. And if we don't do that, we will lose out or we will be on the path of degrowth. There are number of thousands of CA firms I see that their turnover remains same or their efforts have gone up. Their turnover has gone up by 10, 15, 20 percent. Their efforts have gone up by 40 percent. That is also a degrowth, yes. right? So all said and done, now big corporate, if we have any problem, unfortunately here there is a chest pain, what will be, okay, let us go to corporate Wokard or Apollo or someone, the doctor who has served us, the MBBS doctor who has served us by taking 80 rupees, 100 rupees for 25 years, our children will not take them through that. Why? Because there is multi-specialty hospital, big infrastructure, big system, support system. So that is same happening. It, the way things are happening with family doctor, the same is happening with the family CA whom we have served a lot, the next generation comes, one that turnover is more than 100 crore, they will look for big four or maybe big, big firms, whom they value more perhaps. Maybe their services are equally good, perhaps at times our services are more personalized and more attentive, but at all, that is what it is. So I think I had to speak for some time mm -hmm. and my, my presentation is also there, that what will what will sustain in future, whether scalability or innovation. Earlier, that was on GST on real estate sector. I speak on only three things. One is GST on real estate sector. One is the innovation, that how India is here. We all have iPhones or maybe all foreign brands over here. So we do job work for them. So in profession also, are we doing the same thing or not? So. This was, these all are my personal ideas, maybe relevant for you somewhere, sometime. Please accept, otherwise, please throw it in garbage bag. Mm -hmm. But thank you very much for your uh, recent year. I think your question is left out. Okay, so. Uh, as I said, uh, 60 to 100 rupees is a per square foot uh, things. So you can find 500 square foot, 30,000 rupees per month. It's a fixed cost plus maintenance cost. You can say another 10 rupees per square foot. Apart from the your resources cost and the fees cost, the $500 application fee, 5,000 for the SEZ thing, 25,000 for the registration fee, $2,000 for the IFSC registration. All put together, I would say it would be in the you can hire the consultant, you can do your your one. If you are not hiring any consultant, it would be must be in the range of uh, 100,000 to 200,000. All put together, the fees and everything, your efforts, your traveling and everything. Because everything is online. I think you have to travel for the presentation, you have to travel for the uh, meetings and the interview kind of thing. So all put together, this would be the roughly cost. Apart from the furniture fixtures, which is a capex one, you can uh, assume as per your design, as per your taste, whatsoever. Yeah. So, anything else? Uh, any questions? What do you see? What people? Corporate doing the work in other. For the name thing that you think of, it's like that. It is like that right now. Right now. So I would not come in from this dais, but uh, it is like that. But still, people and authority are not that much vigilant. That's why this is doing. Apart from that, as is relaxed for the things work from home till August 2023. So once it is over, then everyone has to be there in their offices, and their revenue and everything would be linked with -vis their resources, everything. So that would be linked. But another one year would be still the time. There is a happening thing. People are fully there. Full house is there. 100,000 people are there. That Up to that time, there will not be any uh, arm twisting. It will be little bit revenge. 
But post that, you can have a uh, facing of every authority, IFSC, income tax, everyone. Yeah. I think they are taxing. Uh, yeah, yeah, they are mostly. Exactly. See, if you are, if you are, money is exactly. See, for Singapore, Indonesia, Philippines, where the BPO, KPO works are going on, even the Vietnam also, where the language issue is there. But when you are remitting uh, funds over there, you are paying from there, you are earning over there, you are getting a tax exemption over there. So why should you not be in Gap City? Everything has been offered over here. It is a local thing. You can have a better resources. And India is a good uh, hub for the KPO, BPO. So every people in uh, outside US, UK, Australia is hiring our services. Why don't we get over there? Okay. So we have an office in US and we are uh, working from the CPO office. Why should not we work from here? So this is a basic concept. And the main thing is the uh, revenue should be brought into here. All foreign currency, foreign exchange should be here. And apart from the employment, more important is employment. You see, the EKC also goes like this. It's time to make the effort. So, you see, you say, small, you say, 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 we have not had big business there. Now we have very good business now. But in one year back, we were we were also gambling. But since our our, our size is such that we must have made our place and we could buy through the lead from our team that okay, I will dedicate to work on that, leaving my all current assignments aside. So we have that, that kind of size, we have that kind of people who can get us because. You, uh, we have not registration but for clients also, we could buy more how much back and forth and continuously we have to export. It, it's all now celebrity game. The size matters a lot. So, in short, we have to throw the dice and start playing the game. Yes. Yeah. That's why we are here. Yeah. So, 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 we have to start playing the game. Yes. So if you say then uh, when February 20, when the NCD services circulars come out, then CNK Khandwala has got the registration within 15 days. Within, it's over the red carpet. So once you move on ahead and people are coming to know the intricacies and how we are playing with the regulations, so they are coming to know, okay, this is allowed, this is not allowed, this is allowed. And what they say, if these 500 units are there, Okay, I need only 50 the chartered accountants or other 50 ancillary units. I do not need 200 ancillary units. So that's why they are restricting you also. So once it grows, then they will need. As we said, if the industry is going with the paper, uh, population of this India, then we are only four lakh. So there will be also a requirement. It is not, but at this juncture, they are saying, okay, they are scrutinizing everything. But if you are good enough, you are having good legacy, good bandwidth, they are allowing. And once it is relaxed for the KPO, BPO, it will be, uh, building will be flooded like anything. So you will see the BKC, you will see the Aero City, Delhi. So we will see the population like that. Is the good time to set up now or wait until 2025 because you said building should be delivered? So, uh, uh, see, now in incubation, they are giving a six seater with a cost of 16,000 per seat. If you are going to find a square feet, it will be 30,000. At this cost, it may be say 70, it may be 80. But what we suggest, if you have a good plan, if you have a good plan to grow, then you go there, establish over there. After two years, you will be the ready platform to launch. So till the time, you should be, uh, rather, even you are making a loss, you should be uh, quite uh, enough funds to bear that. Otherwise, you will shut it down within two years and you will get it <laughs> back to the office. Nice about these small firms, uh, yeah. So there is all together is the uh, idea about the uh, networking so and the consolidation is all put together. We have to do, we have to do in the coming years. Otherwise, we will be vanish. You have any partners. <laughs> <laughs> but for that purpose, he is launching uh, one of the concepts, which is maybe two, three months. 
whether all networking, all good firms, good in ethics, I would say, not in revenue. No, no. It would be a uh, not a firm, CA firm networking. It would be a consulting kind of networking. So you must be seeing the incorp. Uh, so that's why. So you can always uh, go for that. So it's a different uh, kind of network. It may be within the ICA regulations. It will not be any breach of that. Right. Because then the duplication does not happen. I do transfer you also do to our old team. I make my website, you also make your website and updates. Every time new notification comes. The problem is we lose our time, money, and energy in duplicates. And whereas big firms or big core or maybe other big giant, whatever companies are there at the same time. It's not only CA firms or maybe legal firms, they win over there. My, my 5,000 5, square feet and 700 square feet of conference zone, it gets utilized only for two hours, three hours. You also get utilized for two, three hours, but your capital expenditure is there, my mind is there. But if we are five people together, but but difficult to run the show among city. In our 40 CFP, we close our deal of 500 crore, 1,000 crore factory within one hour. We don't close. Maybe of high crore transits about 15 lakhs transits for 10 years because we put our mind to everyone. Yeah. Okay, okay, there is a logic. Okay, he comes early, I come late, I have good connection, he goes not there, this and that. That is good, sir. We have to go beyond that because yeah. time requires it. It was working very well till now. But now every profession will have to go beyond those lines because the future is very bright. If we don't that, then the future is very dark also. Mm -hmm. So, as you said, that, uh, since I was in pharma company for uh, quite long years, uh, with a good setup of plant, facility, manufacturing facility, why I do for the camps, contract research and manufacturing? Because I do not invest into that area. I do not have any experience. And people are established over there who are doing well. So, that's how the concept should be there in our practice also. If I am good at uh, something GST, then I should pass on the work for the other things, diet tech, or other M and A or whatsoever. So that networking if it happens in, then the, we are at good without merging also. We are because network is should be there for all the purpose and we should be uh, yeah getting under one umbrella. Yeah. Yes, 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 yes. That's that. So you have the experienced people and you might have come across the many faces, ups and downs in your practices. And no, I, I oh, <laughs> so that's why I see if you have good uh, associate or whatsoever, I'm not saying within the framework of institute, but if you have good uh, offices or other, you got good network in Palanpur, right? These people are able to do the work, what we are doing there. Yeah. So, <laughs> so that's why we are getting the benefit with every buy. Yeah. Okay. That's all, friend. Thank you very much. Oh, what a session. I mean, uh, I think we all learned a lot of new things today. A lot of interesting things. Thank you, sir, for such a great session. So, yeah, we are running kind of short of time. So, uh, I'll move on to the next session. And next session... <laughs> you want me to introduce? I'll, I'll, yeah. I'll, 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 yeah. So please join me to welcome uh, Amish Kandra. More than 10 minutes. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. So, okay. So, then you can continue, please, in front of Till the time it gets.
strategic planning and management advisory he has been a member of indirect tax committee of gujarat chamber and commerce and industry from 2007-8 to 2019-20 as well as he has been a vice chairman from 2021 to 2122 and uh, for this for last year he has been a chairman for one year from 22 to 23 presently he uh, he is a special invitee member of audit advisory board of principal director of audit cng at amdavad he has written books on service tax gst in gujarat as well as english languages and this should top but all he has been declared as top 10 eminent gst consultants in india for the year 29 2018 by instax and not only that he has delivered a lot of lectures on service tax and gst at gujarat sales tax bar association all gujarat petition of tax consultants and many more institutes yeah please join me to welcome mr ca anish kanwar thank you sir thank you sir so i have done my ca from uh, thank you first of all wrc narpit bhai for giving me this opportunity to share some of my thoughts <clears throat> i did my ca from mumbai then went back to ahmedabad because i come from a uh, 125 km away from ahmedabad uh, a district and uh, then got settled in ahmedabad unfortunately didn't clear ca that fast so i had to go back now i i'm really happy that there is a very good work life balance there and ahmedabad is growing a lot luckily it may so happen that 2036 olympics bidding is going is it will happen maybe and it it is declared that the growth of gujarat and uh, the vision of uh, sri narendra modi ji will be is already there and that uh, growth of ahmedabad will be from there to there now my this short presentation uh, what would what would sustain means uh, this uh, if we see this is first mover's advantage we we all should aspire to do that now now we see fintech startup young young boys 25 years old uh 25 years old only uh young guys and girls create 1000 crore 2000 crore 5000 crore company whereas three generation four generation manufacturing factory seven eight factories that turnover is 500 crore that net worth is 200 300 crore and the person whom we don't feel that isko to main 50000 rupees salary nahi dunga and he creates a company out of new moon no? so that is the beautiful part of life and these all youngsters are going to enjoy and we are going to witness it to some extent so it's a, like green revolution like technological revolution uh, like uh, industrial revolution this is going to be technological revolution so so many things of us should be backed by technology over a period of time and uh, that is where somewhere the startup thing comes but in our old days it was first mover advantage now it is a startup new concept so it is like uh, i do no. i do do it my way so that is the fantastic book way this is what is this is very interesting <clears throat> if you see survival of the fittest this is for industry but it applies to us as well or every profession and every business now if you see in 70s this all corporates were from where to where these were top 15 corporates then another 20 years and then comes 2015 and then it will come 2030 35 right so this 20 years journey will be there if you see tata billa mafatlal kct acc lnb jkc all these were from where to where like today sadani is an ambani is where there at that point of time then from there after 20 years if you see so many have started fading out because they could not upgrade themselves they could not resist the change or they could not adapt the change right so if you see in this 70 to 2015 uh, around 45 years journey only three groups have remained that is red color tata billa and lng so that is there only three companies have remained relevant the only thing is mahindra and mahindra was there in 70 then they missed out in top 15 in 90 but because of anand mahindra and other leadership they again came back in 2015 as top 15 groups so if that can, what my take from this is if that can happen to the industry which is ruling the entire market having 30% 20% 40% at times of the market share and if they become 
redundant, if they can become obsolete and if they can vanish, then we have a small practice. We are people dependent, we are technologically dependent. So always innovation and scalability to size and scalability. If I have innovation, WhatsApp had only 28 employees. When it got sold for 20 billion US dollars, at that time, the price was maybe 60, 65, so 120,000 crore rupees. And what, what was the strength of the development team of WhatsApp was only 28, because that was a pure innovation. So either we need to invest our life into that, or we need to make a scale or and size with reasonable good quality and reasonable good vision that we can sustain for a long time. We can take good projects, we can be relevant for them. So that was it, like ethics, consistency, adaptation, honesty, and innovation, all these things. This is also, you must have seen in Nokia's biggest failure was an unwillingness to embrace the, the drastic change. So, so in their agent, his uh, CEO was trying that no, we didn't lost. Uh, Any one of you know the story of this? They didn't adopt Android and they were just, you know, using their old technology. Yes. So they didn't embrace all the changes. Yes. So one of the reasons, because one of the major reasons was that. Anyone else from youngsters? Come Komal or Sonal? Komal. Yeah. See, if younger, uh, huh? Okay. 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 One of the reasons, yeah. The one, one of that I know, you can correct me if I know whatever I speak is perhaps somewhere if it is wrong, but what other than these two reasons, there was one reason that embracing change was at that time we were using Nokia uh, Tetris 3310, no? They had to kill that product and then only the new product came in because people were used to. So all were texting by thumb. So it was too, too fast. No? You can use two thumbs to text it. And there was Whenever this happens, they spare, suppose a new engine of a company or maybe Ford, Tata or any other company has to be made. They give 1,000 crore to one research and development team, r and and 1,000 crore to teach them. They don't interact with each other. They don't meet each other so that they don't influence their innovation. They, they spend three years, you spend three years, 1,000 crore at each level will be spent. And after that, whatever comes up on the board, on the table, they will either select this or this. 1,000 crores is not a, maybe 10,000 crores is not a big amount. Maybe three, five years is not a big amount. It's big time for them because it is a research. So after that 1,000 crore, okay, I'll select this team or I will select this team. That community, that, 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 that community of board of directors or the whatever are the decision makers will decide. So that team, including his CEO, they thought that this, this pressing with two thumbs is quite fast. And thus, and by that time, there was a, so another team had come with these smartphones, no? That, that, that screen and all that. And okay, this seems nonsense because we have to press each and every word each, each, with one finger only. So it is time for it. So that committee or board thought that this is not going to work. Which even when Apple came, so many people thought also that this, this is may not work like. So they thought in good faith, that another team had also come with that solution that the smartphone is going to be the future. But somehow they felt that. And that Nokia, which was giving maybe 55% tax revenue of the Finland company, then it went bankrupt and all that. So that is the this is the level that we these are the case studies that we need to learn. Why people go to IIM and all that. It's not required that no, all IIM guys can start their own business. But our horizon, our vision, our thinking process, our collaboration goes far beyond than what we are thinking and doing to today. So that is it. This Yahoo story that all know, Yahoo refuses to buy Google for US 1 million. And then last, they got it sold for 4.6 million. At one point time, Microsoft offers to buy Yahoo for 40 million in 2008. And then they got sell for maybe 10%. And even if today, then perhaps maybe even up that also 10%. Because technology <laughs> company, so right decision, it's all destiny also at times. This is a Samsung story. They started as a grocery shop. And you see, it's a long, so I am skipping it. But it's a long journey. How they make, how they change from a grocery shop to a 
today electronic giant or conglomerate so it's there so some examples of boldness scrapping of police no once upon a time police was everything then scrapping microsoft versus apple microsoft's concept is we will give you whatever you want whatever customer wants we will give you apple apple believes that no we know what you want we know the best what you want and we will give you this watertight compartment so it's a different philosophy but they excel because they continuously update and they adapt change and they do innovation so that's it for us general practice then bucket bucket firm and then large firm and the institution this is a journey maybe 110 150 years 200 years 25 years and all that but if we don't grow beyond a point if we don't create legacy don't create institution then whatever knowledge and whatever connections and whatever thoughts we have it dies with us so it's a kind of creating institution and very few people <laughs> Even though we have four lakh chartered accountants, maybe we have one lakh, one lakh fifty thousand in practice. If we ask that how many Indian firms are having turnover more than two hundred and fifty crores, maybe five firms, maybe may not be even five firms. How many firms more than hundred crores? Okay, a number is not that important entirely, but at the same time, how many firms having more than five hundred people? How many firms catering to Fortune five hundred companies? We if we put all these criteria. But if we feel that you no, know, in spite of our knowledge, our brain, our capacity to do and to achieve all this, and our own people working in big four and catering to them, but we cannot collaborate, we cannot network with each other, we can't achieve. In spite of having our, <clears throat> uh, you can say, ki our competence or capability or efficiency. So that is where business comes into the market because businessmen for a uh, Reliance Jamnagar refinery, Thirubai Ambani need not to be a petroleum engineer. If he would have been a petroleum engineer, he would have been doing jobs somewhere else because then he is a collaborator. And collaborator for that, maybe formal education is needed, equally may not be needed. What is required is the out of box thinking, the, the the different viewpoint, the collaborative or the coordination. That's what it is. So this can go on and on, but uh, I'll because anyway it is one o'clock. Mm -hmm. I mean, it's like for the company, but they didn't uh, encourage that. Okay. They didn't think that they were confidential. Okay. They, they rejected that and then Netflix went on to become then what it is today, yeah. So it, it, it's all OTT platforms now. We don't know what is the valuation of IPL. We can see. So it's 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 completely different market. It's 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 really crazy, it's uh, thrilling, it's enjoyable journey, challenging journey. Somewhere we are spectators, somewhere we are partners, somewhere <clears throat> we are uh, influencers, and somewhere we are getting affected also badly or fine that, that's a journey that we all have to play but if i see if i increase my vision if i don't think about myself that okay mere ko kya mila? okay uh, against my efforts how much i have got it if we can put behind for five years i can assure all youngsters that you can do wonders but if i feel that okay uh, what is mine then then maybe yeah our journey will be a normal life journey it cannot be a journey which other will cherish and other will remember from the dais. So that's all. Uh, this all can go on and on. But uh, if uh, yeah, this is the normal Google office. If you see, <clears throat> this is the Google office that we see. And the, oh my God, this is the local brand. And this is the typical of our office and all that. This is ten richest people and uh, yeah, those. Education system for all doing all this, we need to go to our basics. If we go to Taksasila and Nalanda, we will get so many answers of our problems. It's not required that we have to look forward to Oxford and Harvard and Stanford. We will get our uh, our answers, uh, our answers of our current problems or the current challenges or the way we look, we should look forward to the future from our ancient also. So whatever comes from west is best it's not always so rather and most of the time we have unfortunately taken their west and not best
So they eat pizzas and burgers and all that, but they don't eat, including myself, beyond 5.30, so they can digest. Their CEO goes and take water and coffee, which we don't, we just press the bell. And so they are very time punctual and so many other things, they have good, good, very good things, which we also need to learn over a period of time. So this is all, uh, how many uh, patterns that we have filed. This is top 10 best. So it, it can go and now uh, I think uh, yeah, this is also jobs. Uh, you can, uh, you all youngsters should watch this. Uh, only this is Steve Jobs. Yeah. This is Steve Wozniak, if you have seen that jobs. And this is last slide, so you don't worry. And uh, this uh, voice cannot come here. But uh, in that movie, if you see uh, Macintosh, Macintosh earlier, the Amna Tim Cook was presented with this Macintosh, no, in Mumbai by someone in Twitter. So when Macintosh was failed, Steve Wozniak was then they had departed almost. He, he had requested in your AGM, you should at least appreciate, even though they have failed the efforts of the team that they have put in. And uh, then he said, no, Steve Jobs was very completely different. <clears throat> you know, I don't admire the people who don't who are not successful in life. They need to prove themselves. So then his partner, means Steve Wozniak, again tells him what you have done in your life. Have you coded? Have you done any programming? And uh, so on and so forth. So the, the, signature, uh, uh, the, the signature sentence by Steve Jobs was, you are best of the musician in your role. You are best of the musicians in your role, but I am an orchestra. Hmm. I'm not best. You are the best musicians in your role. So maybe it, there can be 50 best musicians. You are best. I don't doubt it. But I am an orchestra. I know how to collaborate, how to network. And, I, and, and on my fingers, they all are playing. So this is the movie that, uh, and uh, then Steve Jobs, there is a, I was like do, I play the orchestra. Yeah, that's it. So uh, that that's also we need to learn over a period of time. Uh, thank you very much for your time, and uh, we will connect sometime in future, uh, or with 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 a large time, with more time, and uh, it's already one o'clock. Sorry for getting late. Your lunch, or maybe I don't know. By one hour. Thank you very much. <laughs> Thank you, sir. Uh, I just have one question to ask. Uh, how's the session? Hopefully, it was really interesting and really informative. And hopefully, a uh, good, well spent day. So, <laughs> yeah. Very interesting, very informative as well. Yeah. So, on behalf of WIRC, I would like to thank the Chairman of WIRC, Mr. Arpit Kabra, for first of all for giving me this opportunity to come here and uh, do this. Uh, I mean, this is my first time. I fully did a recent job. And for coming up with initiatives like my role at WIRC, it's a great initiative. I mean, it's uh, we here at CA will get opportunities to come here and be part of ICI in some way, in smaller way, but in smaller whatever way. I mean, uh, yeah, so it's a great, great opportunity for uh, people like me. Secondly, I would like to thank uh, our senior member of ICI, uh, Mr. Parag Rawal, sir, for arranging this great session and coming all the way down here. Thank you, sir. And then, of course, and I would like to thank from bottom of my heart the speakers for today, Mr. C.A. Vipul Gandhi, sir, for making us aware about the opportunities for CAs and industries in Gip City. I mean, we, we learned a lot of things there. And it's a great, I mean, uh, everyone should visit the city and get a feel of it and interact with people there. You will get to know a lot of things. And yeah, it's a great, great uh, opportunity for Indians to create something revolutionary, I would say. 
And then, of course, uh, Mr. C.A. Anish, Anish Kamdar, Kandar, sorry, sir. And uh, for uh, talking about innovation and scalability and how important it is to uh, for us to collaborate on new things and innovative things if we want to move forward and if you want to do something. Uh, and of course, as it is said, India is going to be, you know, uh, India is the third, uh, uh, third startup ecosystem in the world. And it's going to be India's decade as everyone is saying it. And so there are a lot of innovation, there are a lot of startups coming up. And I think if, if you are getting a chance to be part of such an ecosystem, you should go and yeah, uh, contribute in whatever you ways you can. So yeah. And the session wouldn't end without thanking our staff of WIRC. I think they are the backbone of such events. And of course, we all thank you for being so patient and thank you for taking time out of your busy schedule to come out here. Thank you. And I would like to point out a few things. Please visit www.wirc-ici.org for new, any new updates and new programs. Then secondly, don't forget to scan QR code, which is right outside the room. You will get the pictures of the event right here, right now. And then, and lastly, as Renzi's and millennials will would say, please don't forget to post it on Lyft. Lyft is basically LinkedIn, Instagram, Facebook, Twitter. Tag ICI and chairman, of course, and yeah, use hashtag ICI. Yeah, thank you, thank you for the great section.